Do it like this. Do it like this. Do it like this. Welcome everybody inside Center Ice Arena here in Traverse City, Michigan for the 2022 Prospect Tournament presented by Huntington Bank. I'm Daniela Bruce alongside the radio voice of your Detroit Red Wings, Ken Callen. Joining us for today's broadcast between the Red Wings and the Toronto Maple Leafs, we've got the voice of the Toronto Marlies, the AHL affiliate for the Maple Leafs, Todd Crocker. Todd, it is so great to have you here with us today. Thank you for joining us. Daniela, all the way from Canada, you know, so far away. <laughs> Don't be surprised if I, I say Daniela. Oh, so, uh, I, that's a new one. Yeah. That'll be a first. That's a new <laughs> that one. That pops out. It's <laughs> all my fault. It's all local. All right. I love it. I love it. Ken, it's always exciting to have a guest broadcaster with us, especially when we're learning all about these Toronto prospects Well, today. they grow them big in Toronto, I'll that's tell you. What, what are you, a 6'5", something like that? You know, I was just saying because <laughs> I'm taking heat on Twitter for being short next to the players, and now I've got Todd in here. I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I was 5'11", but it's all the cherries I had this weekend <laughs> up here in the cherry capital of the world. Yes. Not just Michigan. Are you? Did world. you actually have a lot of cherries? I actually did. You know, okay. I, you can't come to a place that claims to be the cherry capital of the world and not at least have, like, a cherry's jubilee or something like that. <laughs> That's right. Cherry and golf. Do you golf? I do golf, but... That's not what I call it when I do it. Okay, <laughs> right. It does right, not right. look the same. I think that's most people. So you're yeah. not alone there. You're not alone there. All right, we've got the Red Wings and Maple Leafs in the last game of the Prospect Tournament here in Traverse City. Let's look at the Red Wings starting lineups for today, or should I say the lines that we are projecting to see in today's game. Elmer Soderblom, Drew Ward, and Cross Hannes leading off the forward core for the Red Wings today, Ken. Cross Hannes and Elmer Soderblom both had impressive games against Dallas on Saturday. Yeah, Cross Hannes especially good on the power play, and yeah. I thought the the Red Wing power play in the tournament so far has been really good. Hannes has been a big part of it, whether he's shooting the puck on goal or passing it to teammates. Ward has a goal. He's got a power play goal. And Soderblom's got that big reach, you know. Yeah. So it's it was interesting for me to see him play live and up close and personal. And I thought he's had a pretty good camp so far. So you'll get the last look at the forwards there. Let's look at the defensive pairings that we're going to see. Simon Edvinson and Seth Barton leading things off. Emil Vero, Oscar Plandowski, Donovan Sabrango, who was a scratch on Saturday, alongside Jeremy Biakabatuka, who's having a great tournament as well, Ken. Simon Edvinson's been pretty steady back there on the blue line. I know a lot of people that have been watching the streams or are here in person in Traverse City really want to watch him play, and I thought he's been pretty solid back there on the blue line. Albert Johansson, who I wanted to see, played a couple of games. He is not in the lineup tonight. But it'll be interesting to see uh, how Edmondson teams up, especially with Seth Barton. And we are expecting to see Jan Bednar start the game for the Red Wings today. Sebastian Cosa is also active. So as we've seen from the Red Wings throughout the tournament, they've been switching their goaltenders about halfway through the game. So we will expect a change from them again here today. And now we're going to take a look at Toronto, Todd. Let's see the lines that we have the Toronto Maple Leafs rolling out here today. Now, what I want to mention is you told us before the broadcast that this is the fourth game for Toronto. They're the right. only team playing four games in the tournament. So maybe some of the bigger guns that Toronto has we're not seeing today. You've got some guys that Wednesday have a skate test ahead of them. Right. So playing four games over five nights, uh, probably not high on the list of guys like Alex Steves and Nick Abrazese and uh, Nick Robertson as well. And and so I think you're going to see a lineup here with Pontus Holmberg uh, starting on that top line, Graham Slaggard on the left side. There's some guys that are... Uh, creating some interest at the AHL level as well. Pavel Gogolev working <laughs> with uh, Semyon Dargachinsev. They played in Peterborough together in junior, played a bit uh, over Gogolev's time in the American League as well. And big Curtis Douglas at uh, 6'9 will play in the fourth game for him. All right, now let's take a look at the defensive pairings that we're going to see for Toronto as well. Again, we do see some scratches on the defensive side. What can you tell us about the core that we're going to see here today? Well, I think looking at Miko Kokonen, they certainly have him on their radar. They want a good, a good look at him and make sure he gets a good start to his season and where he's going to go. I think they project him uh, more in the American Hockey League, but they... This is a guy who's a project for them that they want to work on and make sure that he has an accelerated path if he can get there. 
All right, and in net, it looks like we are going to have Luke Cavillan. Am I saying that Luke correctly? Cavillan, All right, are, there indeed. we go. Can you tell us a little bit about him? Yeah, Luke Cavillan, uh, he signed to an AHL contract. Uh, the idea here for the Maple Leafs uh, has been to get good depth at goaltending. Let's bring in a lot of guys. Let's get some challenges for the jobs, both on the big club and as far as the uh, whole organization is concerned. And Luke Cavillan is going to be one of those guys that, uh, from what I've seen so far, mm -hmm. strong challenger. As many of you know, the tournament here in Traverse City is always a great one. A lot of high-end talent. We've seen some great matchups throughout the tournament. So the three of us and our fourth member of the broadcast team, Carly Johnston, who is standing by, we're going to pick a player of the tournament for you, somebody that stood out to us. First of all, Carly, welcome back. But tell us who your standout player has been. Thank you. I appreciate that. So this was a tough one for me because there have been so many good standout players that we've seen. So when you asked me to pick just one, I kind of had to sit down and think about it for a minute because there are a few players that I've really noticed and have been really impressed by during this tournament. But the one player I want to talk about specifically is Kirill Tatayev. He has a goal and two assists in this tournament that actually he scored Saturday during that game against the Dallas Stars. And he could have had two goals. He hit the post right before he scored. So it's nice to see him finally get on the goal sheet, or the score sheet. And I have to say, I like seeing that offensive power out of him. He had a great training camp last year so it's nice to see him continue that success this year so we saw him on that top line but today he's going to be on the second line so we'll see how he's able to shift through those lines I think it's not going to be a problem for him I'd like to see him not another one so we'll see what he has today for us but what do you think I know Danielle and I you were talking about this before and we kind of had the same player yep. in mind as well that we were going to pick so Talk a little bit about yours. Yeah, well, Kirill Tutayev, I think it's a great pick because obviously we want to see what he has, especially after he only played nine games with the Griffins right. last year, the shoulder surgery. So, yeah, he looks good. He's coming off an injury, and he's looked really good. But the player we were talking about, Carly, is Cross Hannes. And I know Ken mentioned him. He was great on the power play. He seems to be involved in every single offensive play that the Red Wings make. He has a goal and two assists as well, just like Tutayev. <laughs> so we're going to be looking to him to bring some of that offensive power here today. Now, Todd, why don't you go next? Because I know you're going to – you're going to give us a Toronto guy, aren't you? <laughs> well, I, I feel like I have some expertise here, although slight. <laughs> I do have a small edge there. I, I like Alex Steves. Uh, I like what he's brun, uh, brought to the organization over the course of his time in the American League out of Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, he played with a full Notre Dame line yesterday as well with uh, uh, Ellis and Slaggart. And uh, it was nice to see them gel together and, and play together. I think Steves has grown into... Uh, a good skater. I think he's got good sense uh, around the ice, and he's a guy through this tournament that used the tournament for its true purpose. Let's get up to speed. Let's get to a point where I'm ready to take that uh, test, uh, the skating test and the wind gate and whatever else they got on the goal that they're going to throw at me in training camp. I think he used this tournament wisely. Yeah, goal and three assists for Steve throughout the tournament, so he has been very impressive. Ken, who are you picking? Well, I have to go with the goaltenders. I think Jan Bednar was terrific against the, the Dallas Stars mm -hmm. and uh, was faced 19 shots in the first uh, period, I think, alone, and he was just terrific. And uh, Sebastian Kosa, who really had a lot to prove, I thought, in this pr prospects tournament, really played well in the game against the Columbus Blue Jackets in the opener. And the Red Wings needed goalkeeping, and they needed to be playing well defensively in front of their goalkeeper. So I thought Bednar and Kosa were terrific. To me, they're the standouts, in my opinion. Yeah, they have been very, very good. And Andrew Oak has had his moments, too, so the Red Wings goaltending has all been good. Carly, thank you so much. Again, welcome back. She'll be working the ringside for us today, so we'll check in with you later. That's right. Yep, I'll have some player interviews and intermissions, and you guys don't forget to vote in the QR poll today. That's right. We're going to get into that right now, Carly. Thank you for reminding me. So we do have an awesome poll like we had in the first game. And today's question is a good one because we've got an original six matchup here today. Oh, so who is the biggest original six rival for the Red Wings? You'll see the QR code on screen right now. You can scan that. And your options are the Toronto Maple Leafs, the Boston Bruins, the New York Rangers, the Chicago Blackhawks, and the Montreal Canadiens. Now, I'm going to go ahead and say it's the Toronto Maple Leafs. That's my vote right there. I, I know that you've been around that rivalry for a long time yeah. there, Todd. And whenever Toronto comes to Detroit, there's a lot of blue in the stands, and they get the let's go Red Wing chance going. They get the go Leafs go going. So it's always so much fun when those two 
are meeting up. Yeah, I think just sheer proximity would yeah. tell you that. And I think anybody who ventures outside of Toronto, and I grew up an hour outside of Toronto in Hamilton, and, and once you start to move that way when you're talking original six, there's a lot of folks London on down that are split between the Red Wings and the Leafs and a lot of folks wearing their their Red Wings jerseys just about everywhere, and a lot of folks with the Leafs. So I, I tend to lean that way, too. Yeah, I love it. And, Ken, I know another great one is the rivalry between the Red Wings and the Montreal Canadiens, which we'll get to open the season with this year. October 14th is opening night at Little Caesars Arena, and that will be great. So tell us about that rivalry. What do you like about that rivalry? Well, I think if you go back to the 50s, especially in 1954 and 1955, the Red Wings had uh, two great Stanley Cup finals against the Montreal Canadiens, and the Wings won both of them. I think at that particular time, people would say, yep, the rivalry is Detroit and Montreal, but I agree with Todd. I, I think it's the Toronto Maple Leafs, and how can we not forget the big game at the big house uh, on, oh, in, the, yeah, winter classic, in the winter classic where we had 110,000 people. We had half Leaf fans, half Red Wing fans. What I really enjoyed about it is that uh, all the fans from Toronto and Detroit really got together. And it was a snow-covered day and the snow was falling down. It was just one of the greatest games to ever be at. And I know, Todd, uh, you, you remember that game and it was oh. just uh, terrific, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that weekend, too, uh, the Marlies played the Grand Rapids Griffins at Comerica and... Uh, I'll, I'll tell you what I remember the most about that weekend is I just thought out about a week ago from that. <laughs> it was so cold that at, at that weekend that I just, I tell you what, it, it's, the, it's the memory of the searing cold, but that, that really is a great point to jump off of between Detroit and Toronto and the people that are passionate yeah. about it in both places. There's so much hockey love. Yeah, that a ton. It, it does. It supersedes the rivalry. Yeah, it's so much fun. Well, you know, you bring up the point that it was cold, Todd, and uh, we had a reporter, a sideline reporter. His name's Jeff Rieger, and he had to go to the bathroom so bad, and the security <laughs> guards would not let him go. By the end of the game, he couldn't walk. You know, he had to hurry up and go. So, so uh, not only did he freeze, but he had to go to the bathroom too, and they wouldn't let him go. Oh, I, I'm sure Rieger's going to appreciate you telling us that story on the stream. Hopefully, he's listening. The, the story <laughs> of the frozen bladder. That's right. <laughs> Well, as we mentioned, the rivalry between the Red Wings and the Maple Leafs, it carries over into games like this. Whether you want, you know, like they come out here and they know that the big clubs are rivals. And I don't know if you want to say they hate each other, but they want to play well against each other. They want to win these games. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and I see it, too, uh, obviously, in the American League. Yeah. Because Grand Rapids has been good for so long. In the last uh, 10 years, the, nobody has won more playoff games in the American League than the Marlies. Right. The team in second, Grand Rapids. And they have two championships over the last 10 or 12 years in their pocket as well. So the, what exists between the two clubs at that level? It permeates all the way through the entire organization. And uh, uh, it's always big when, when the two of them come together. It doesn't matter that, that there's going to be no giant trophy handed out here uh, with cherries on top. Uh, <laughs> but there, it, it does. It, the game's going to matter. Five seconds into it, you're going to yep. recognize it. They should start handing out like a cherry trophy yes. at this tournament. We should Absolutely. get that going. Didn't we have a Ken Cal trophy for a couple of years? We what did. was that? I think Art Regner started that yeah, one. Yeah, he did. Yeah, but he uh, did. you know, you know what? Uh, <laughs> they could say life's a bowl of cherries, right? right. You know, we could have the tournaments full of cherries, but it, yeah, they should have a some type of cherry. I I, I believe that. Yeah. As we lead up to puck drop here, Todd, I did want to ask you one question about the Maple Leafs because when you look at the stats for this tournament, there is one stat that pops off the page. The Maple Leafs are 0 for 10 on the power play. What's right. been happening there? Well, I think for you could really point to the fact that in a tournament like this, you're running a pretty simple power play, mm -hmm. and you can be aggressive on a penalty kill, and the teams that have done that against uh, the Maple Leafs, they've come hard on the PK because you can. You can mm -hmm. force them to make a mistake or two uh, in, the, in that situation and keep them away from the puck and keep them from setting up because you're trying to really just set up the simplest possible answer, the extra man that you possibly can. That should be the recipe for any team in this tournament. All right, it looks like we are getting set for both the Canadian and American national anthems, everybody. Back to Center Ice Arena for the final day of the 2022 NHL Prospects Tournament. Today's game from Molin Rink pits the Toronto Maple Leafs against the Detroit Red Wings.
Fans, at this time, we ask if you are able to, that you please rise and remove your hats for the playing of O Canada and the Star Spangled Banner. All right, and just for all of our fans tuning into the stream today, Ken, Cal, and Todd are going to split some play-by-play -play duties on the, the morning here. So it's going to be a lot of fun having the both of you. It's exciting. really is exciting. And, uh, you know, Todd, uh, you and Bob Kayser go back a long time. Oh, yeah, and I work do. with Bob. Bob's filled in on our Red Wing yeah. broadcast from time to time. And it be interesting to hear uh, your insight on the Toronto Maple Leafs. And this is always a good tournament and a good way to end Red Wings versus Leafs. Well, I know Patrick Williams, who covers the uh, AHL for NHL.com, I believe, and uh, Patrick uh, one time called, uh, I think, Bob and I and Don Stevens and Rochester, a couple of the other guys, the deans of the American Hockey League, and all that meant to me was, I think I had another birthday. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, we're ready to go here at the uh, center ice. Glad you're in tune. Final game of this Prospects tournament. It's been a fun week. Most of the teams that aren't playing now have headed back to their respective homes, but we are underway here as it's uh, picked up Minton. Had it knocked away from him at center ice. Soderblom tapped it over the line across Hannes, pulls up quickly, throws it to the side of the Maple Leaf goal, and Warad to try and scoop it up, but he's covered in along the corner boards. It's Minton in there trying to look for a loose puck. It comes back up the right side as uh, the wing's still trying to hold it in. Hannes dug it loose. Minton's pass comes out to center ice, and Lasowski will dump the puck into the Detroit end. Seth Barton will pick it up. This is his second game. Nice outlet feed to Soderblom at center. Wheels up over the Toronto line, makes his way in with a rising shot, and Cavalin comes up with the first save of the game. Now a shot from point blank right out in front by Amadeus Lombardi. Ends up into the corner. Lombardi trying to dig it free for Detroit. Spins away from a check. 
Soderblom tapped it around the boards, and now it goes into the corner. Quick feed out to Plandowski. Up his stick, and it came out the center ice. Well, it's a good, it's a good pace to start things out, and that's one of the things that I've noticed in the tournament over the course of the years that have come along here. There's been a lot more speed added to it, a lot more uh, in the way of uh, strong skating, in the way of quick feet uh, to start off every game. No score, opening period. Glad you're in tune here as the puck comes off the center. Piercy, who had four goals in the first game against the Dallas Stars. They shoot it in. Should have been whistled down. It went right to the goaltender, but uh, the play continues. And you're right, Todd and Daniela. Good fast paces. Holmberg from center ice dumps it into the corner in the Detroit end. Well, we talk about the rivalry, but there's also something visually great about a Toronto-Detroit game with the red the and the blue. The colors, blues. that's right. The only two teams with two colors, right? Yeah. <laughs> Hayes, wow, he's got a deceptive way about him. Avery Hayes, he was with the Hamilton Bulldogs in their run to the Memorial Cup. Yeah, made a good play down low to try and get that puck right out in front of the Detroit net. Battle for it, off into the corner in the Toronto zone. Edvinson pinched in along the boards there by Hayes. Puck comes loose and it's steered in behind the goal. Wings pick it up, Bliss, he had a goal in the hockey game against the Dallas Stars, rolls into the corner and finally scooped up by Hayes again, didn't clear it out, Ansel holds it in for Detroit. Up the right side and now finally chipped away and Gogolev to get it to the Detroit blue line. Toronto with a change on the go, there's the big fella, Douglas out there for the Toronto Maple Leafs, he doesn't disappoint Maple Leaf fans, he laid a big hit right there on the forward Trenton Bliss. You mentioned size. Curtis Douglas, Red Wings fans use Elmer Soderblom. He's 6'9", Douglas, 6'9". McGurn with a feet in front, and that one shot wide of the goal by Curtis Douglas, who was bothered from behind on the play. I think what I like about Douglas and what I've liked about him over the course of the year, his intent to grow his game outside his physical presence is admirable. He is committed to it. He's worked with skating coach Randy Milani uh, for the organization and has really improved all facets of his game. I don't know if they quite expected him to be the point getter that he was this past season, but uh, he has been uh, an impressive add, one of the most improved players. Todd, when you think of forwards, you don't look at forwards being six foot nine, six foot eight. Oh. Usually they're defensemen. No, that's true. Think of Brett Burns, he's a player that can play both on the blue line up front. No score opening period. Here's another big fella, Soderblom, up across the line. Poked away right there. Good solid defensive play by Rindell. It came out to center ice, and the wings shoot it in. Poking in into the corner, tied up along the boards by Warren. Buck scooped up by Minton, and now he'll bring it up the left wing boards, out to center ice for the Leafs. Shoots it into the Detroit zone. The puck around the boards, and Sobrango trying to take a jam at it. And it comes out to center ice. And Rindell gets it back. Holmberg missed the feed at center. Travels to the side. Uh, Bednar, who was terrific against the Dallas Stars in his outing, he stopped many, many shots in the opening period. Icing called against the Leafs. I think there's a personality to every game that goes along. And something that I think we've all kind of noticed throughout these tournaments is that first game, there's a real good feeling out process uh, between both clubs. Whoever gets to it first, whoever gels first, usually wins that first game. And then as you roll into the second, there's a little bit more individual on the line. Yep. Everybody's trying to put their stamp on it. Haven't played too many four games here, though, as uh, the Leafs are playing in their fourth game. Yeah, the only team to play four games in the prospect tournament this year. You know, Daniela, we saw a little bit of a different outcome yesterday because Dallas was just outplayed by St. Louis. And two shots, two goals for Dallas, and they went on to win that game handily. Yeah, they did. It was a final score of 7-1 to one in favor of Dallas, who had to play less than 24 hours later. Here's Miller moving it back on the blue line. Ruffay stick handles with the puck, shoots the screen shot wide of the goal. He was trying to pick the left-hand corner, comes back to the line. Another shot, scores! Tommy Miller from the right point shot it behind Bednar, and it's one to nothing Toronto. Yeah, Northeastern, uh, they picked him up, want him to, uh, well, signed him to an AHL contract, which is uh, a, a little, employed a little bit more from the management of uh, the Maple Leafs these days that, that will not limit you to earning the NHL contract. In fact, it's a strong pathway that they're saying is a part of what they want to bring to it. You can sign that AHL contract 
It's not going to limit you. You might, uh, you might actually find that it's going to be the thing that helps you out on your journey. Yeah, at Northeastern, Miller had 39 games played, 12 points, and a plus five. So some good numbers at the college level. That shot could have bothered uh, the goaltender Bednar, and maybe uh, Holmberg may have gotten a stick a on tip. it to deflect it in. Yep. So wait for the official call, but the Leafs get the goal, 4.56 mark of this opening period, and it's 1-0 Toronto. No matter who gets the goal, we can definitely tell you there was traffic in front, and oh, the Leafs yeah. did a good job of getting in Bednar's way. Dan Vliet moved it across. It comes back towards the line. Here's Larson shooting the puck through traffic again. It looks like the, looks like the Leafs, Todd, are getting that traffic out in front of Bednar here. Well, one of the great things you can see at, at where we're calling this, really just a, on the second floor of the rink, you might say, you're so close you can see the intent on the face mm -hmm. of a player that steps around. And they, you know they want the shot. And, and you can see it on their face and their, their body positioning and movement. And Larson wanted that shot and, uh, and let it down, go down toward the goal just a little bit out of position. Now, Holmberg's a player that's playing today that uh, I think the Leafs are looking good things from him, right? Oh, yeah. I think he's, uh, he's one of those guys that uh, has the ability to be all over the ice, is involved in all facets of it. Had a great play yesterday where uh, he... It's timing to play at one end, came down to main offensive play, all in the same shift, and that's exactly what they want from him on a consistent basis. Holmberg, a 2018 sixth round pick, so those are all good things you like to hear from a guy that's drafted in the sixth round. Yeah, and, there, and there's been a couple, as there is on, on every team, a couple of those late picks that really are like lottery wins. You, mm -hmm. you pick them up and you think, well, if it works out great, if it doesn't, well, you know, nobody's putting too much pressure on you. <laughs> we have a few of those later round picks on the Red Wings as well. 2019 seventh round pick, Kirill Tutayev, and then 2022 fourth round pick, Amadeus Lombardi. Two guys that really have showed us they can bring some offensive upside to their games. Yeah, with a lot of offensive upside as a guy we haven't really seen too much, but he's played well in the tournament. That's defenseman Bianca Batuka for mm -hmm. Detroit. Yeah, late addition to the Red Wings team. He wasn't on the original prospect tournament roster apparently there were some injuries and they had to add him and he has been very impressive through the Red Wings first two games here in Traverse City. Penalty coming up I believe to Detroit right here as the play is stopped in that corner in the Maple Leaf zone. Now the other good thing is we're close to the action we can actually hear the players uh, chatting. Yeah. Sometimes you find yourself listening in right instead of talking. That's Martin the guilty party for Detroit. I've never seen a player go to the penalty box that said, yeah, I deserve it. Yeah, <laughs> totally. It's on me. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? That was way outside the rules. I, I need to take two minutes to think about it. Well, Todd, here's a chance for the Leafs power play, who we mentioned has struggled through the tournament. Yeah, just to just to keep it simple and, and move the puck quick. And, and I think any time in the early part of any season, one of the things that uh, power play either gets right away or doesn't is the puck has got to be moved quickly. That's good puck. Quick puck movement right there as uh, the shot was taken from the right circle by Fraser Minton, and he got a good shot away that Bednar made the save on. It's not too often that I think you can, uh, as my old broadcast partner Bob McGill used to say, chicka chicka with the puck. You can't do that. You got to get it, you got to get rid of it. Face off to the left of goaltender Jan Bednar. 1 0 lead for the Maple Leafs. Wings win the draw, and Simon Edmondson in a penalty killing role will fire it down the ice using the right wing boards. Leafs bring it ahead. Alex Rindell brings it out to center ice. Drops it to the trailer with speed. That is Voigt, not a Minton. Up across the Red Wing line, turned it over, and the Wings come back. Hannes cuts the open ice at center ice. Bothered from behind by Minton, and Rindell will pick it up and move in behind the Maple Leaf goal. Minute 25 to go in the Toronto power play. Leafs fleeting one to nothing. And you mentioned Cross Hannes being good on the power play. He's been good on the penalty kill as well throughout this tournament. Certainly has been good special teams player, and he put up some impressive numbers in the WHL. Right circle feed. Minton moves in with a shot. Again, he's had his opportunities here early on. And a save by Bednar. Well, I think he'd like to make a little bit more noise in this tournament. Drafted this year. And I think he'd like to have a, a game where he, he features himself just a little bit more. Of course, he's playing with some of the uh, other players that he did. With Steves, with uh, Nick Robertson. And... Uh, it, easy to have guys with veteran games in them uh, take over the play and the pace of play. Uh, I think he'd like to add that factor today for him. Yeah, second round pick in 2022, so newbie to the tournament, that's yeah. for sure. They're at least first pick. Yeah. 
That's what happens. You start to roll along and you put together good teams year after year. The first round picks tend to go out the out the window as uh, the years move along. Ansel Zito in penalty killing rolls with Plandowski and Soderblom. Still 44 seconds remaining in the minor penalty to Martin of Detroit. And the Red Wings will flip it down the ice. Cavalin quickly out the center. Slagger dumped it off the right wing boards, goes after it in the corner, bumps with his man. The player lost the glove in that corner as they still battle away for it. The man who lost the glove was Slagger, picks it up and still battles for it along the boards. Tripped up for Detroit was Lombardi. Now it's steered down to the right face off circle. Pass across the blue line. Hayes for Toronto moves into the left face off circle. Got it to the line of Kokonen. Kokonen swings it over right side. Dragicinsev. Pass over, left side, Hayes misfires, goes into the corner. Hayes trying to jam it loose. Two seconds to go in the minor penalty to Martin. Martin's back on, he's out of the box and he's got a breakaway. Here's Martin breaking it all alone. He shoots, he scores! Out of the penalty box, Martin scores and it's a 1-1 tie. He might have had to think about his two minute penalty while he sat there in the box, but hey, that's a way to come out and get your team right back in this game. I, I'm not sure there's a lot of moments in hockey that people are pretty proud of and people you know, get energy out of, but I don't know if there's a better feeling as a player getting out of the box, getting the puck, and getting that opportunity and making good on it. Yep. Yeah, obviously penalties, you don't want to take a penalty and you feel that two minutes of shame, but uh, <laughs> now he's feeling pretty good right now, Martin scoring that tying goal. <laughs> I've always said, you know, when you're a forward and uh, you get a breakaway, you, you want to make the best of your opportunities. And if you can put the puck in the net on a pretty regular basis, you could earn a spot. Especially the free agent invitees like Martin. He played in Kitchener last year. And these guys really want to make an impression, not only for the Red Wings, but there are so many scouts here watching this tournament. Yeah, you, you're trying to earn uh, some eyeballs here. And yeah. it's not just uh, it's not just about what you do, it's how you carry yourself off ice, it's how you carry yourself uh, in the process of a professional environment. And uh, if you can do that as well as put together some solid play that gets some people thinking about you for the future, uh, you've done your job. Not an easy one, by the way. Because <laughs> yeah. you know, you're coming from a long way back just being an invitee. Yes, exactly. Both teams with three shots on goal, the game is tied 1-1. Holmberg scoring for Toronto and Martin for Detroit. Wings hold it in. Edvinson shoots the puck. Redirected right out in front. A backhand try. What a save right there by Cavalin as the Wings almost connected for their second goal of the game. Leafs will bring it ahead and now it's Ruffay turning back in behind his own goal. Broken stick on the Actually, that's the Cavalin. goaltender stick. Yeah, that's Cavalin's stick. Cavalin does not have a stick. The Red Wings trying to make him pay. Let's see what happens here as uh, Edvinson's shot was blocked. And now Lasowski out the center ice will bring that puck over the Red Wing line. Working in on Seth Barton, backhands it into the open corner. Larson after it, but Edmondson's going to get there first. And Cavalin picks up that goal stick as the Red Wings break out of their own zone. Halfway through the first period, game tied at 1-1. Edmondson around Douglas, paid the price. Douglas laid the hit on him as he throws it into the Toronto zone. Martin scores, bounces off a check, moves it down low into the corner, Zito. Slagger picked it up, played it ahead, and the Leafs come back. Out at center ice. McGurn will tap the puck to the side of Bednar, who will whip it around the boards. Larson after it, holds it in for the Leafs. Now Sobrango backhands the puck up the glass, and then will allow Detroit to change on the go. Larson hammers it out to center ice, Femus. Stick candles his way over the Red Wing line and pushes it over. Far boards. Jakob Atuka, good skating defenseman. Nice outlet pass to Martin at center ice. He'll flip it over the line to Tutayev. He's trying to turn the corner on Rafai. Instead, he pulls up. Tutayev throws it to the line, taking it over and back. That is uh, Pasquale Vito and uh, Zito, rather, and the play is offside. You know, Carly talked about Kirill Tutayev in the pregame, and we mentioned that he only played nine games with Grand Rapids due to a shoulder injury, and he came to the prospect tournament last year absolutely ready to play took the tournament by storm the red wings fans were so excited to see him so i'm glad that he's getting in the mix obviously we see a play there that didn't turn out in his favor but like we mentioned he's got a goal and two assists 
on the tournament, and he's really, really been involved in the Red Wings offensive play all tournament long, something really good for him. We hope that he can do well in Grand Rapids next season. Well, part of your, anytime you, part of your early career is derailed, Nick Robertson, same thing last year, such high expectations, gets hurt early. I've never seen a guy treat uh, his rehab like he did, but he got through that. And when he finally got back into the lineup, he did make an impact, but it's the amount of games mm -hmm. that you just want to get under your belt. And uh, for guys like Tutayev and guys like Robertson, it's, it's just about getting those reps at that speed that's going to make a difference and vault you to the next level. And the AHL is a strong league. It's one oh. of the best leagues in the world. So getting the experience under your belt at that level is super important for prospects that want to make it to the NHL level. Yeah, I'm not sure most folks, some folks I think that are kind of casual hockey fans or maybe just a little bit better than that, they, they often see it as a penalty. Right. Like it's a, mm -hmm. it's a league, that, but really it's a league like, it's like getting a master's degree in hockey. You, you went through your education, but the AHL is just that next level that, uh, that is going to help you stick and stay and have a long career. Right. I'd also gives players opportunities to play in all different types of That's situations it. as well, whether it's the penalty kill, power play, or if your defense been logging a lot of minutes and being in critical situations, that's going to help your development. Right. Would you rather be at the NHL level not playing very many minutes or in the sure. AHL playing all the minutes that you possibly can? Gokadin, bothered by Tutayev as the Leafs break out. Here's Holmberg with a feed to Voigt up across the Detroit blue line. Stick Candles throws it to the trailer. Colkin in with a shot, and Bednar came up with a pad save, and Lombardi brings it back quickly for Detroit one on two. Wings are changing. Lombardi's the only guy in the offensive zone, moves in with a backhand, and shot that one wide of the goal. Look at the goaltender so far in this game. Bednar coming up with a couple huge saves as well now. Slashing penalty has been assessed to the Toronto Maple Leafs. And now we'll see the Red Wing power play. Game tied 1 1, 8 13 to play in the opening period. Well, and I think that I think you see a good opportunity there by Kokanen again, another a pick that they're going to look at for a longer runway. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a guy that wants to make a little bit more of an impact, gets a great opportunity to jump in the play. You don't get that necessarily in training camp. You know, you've got a bunch of guys who are working their jobs, uh, holding on to their jobs. The Leafs don't have a lot of openings, right. so. You know, you've got to get to a situation here where you can get those reps in so that you're ready for the start of the real uh, the real games that mean points in the standings. From the face off, Lombardi moves in with a shot and Kavalin comes up with a nice glove hand save. The guilty party with the penalty is Graham Slaggart. He's from South Bend, Indiana, actually played for Notre Dame last season, 25 points in 39 games played. Yeah, and he's, he, Graham Slaggart is one of those guys that has come into this tournament. He wants to prove he belongs. Uh, in this organization, he's uh, one of those guys that when I saw him step on the ice, my immediate thought was not only he belongs, he might be more than what they even anticipated. Cross Hannes on the power play. We talked about him, and he's looked pretty good with a man advantage. Wings turn it over, and the Leafs will pick it up. And Rafay dumps it down the ice into the Detroit end. Red Wings have to go 200 feet the other way. Hannes with a cross ice feed to Lombardi, not a Soder Blonde, the Lombardi moving into the corner. Crafty player, Lombardi taps it back to the line. Edmondson, his pass broken up with that long reach of the stick of Douglas, and the puck comes out to the Red Wing line. That has to be one of the best attributes of players, the size of Douglas, the reach that they have on the ice is incredible. Now they don't, they don't give you much. Once they get the wingspan out there, especially yeah. in a penalty kill, when they've got the stick out there and they using the arm the other way, Pretty hard to, to see if you've got a decent shot to take. Yeah, they make you go the long route, that's for sure, if they get that stick out there. You ain't gonna get an opportunity on the short route, but you gotta go the, uh, the long route, and now the Leafs shoot it down the ice. 55 seconds to go in the Red Wing power play. 7.06 to go first period, a 1-1 tie. Here comes Barton out to center, feed pass over the blue line. Piercy who had four goals in the first game of the tournament against the Dallas. Slow it up, it comes out to center ice. Barton will regroup. Hayes lost his stick. Barton will pick it up again calmly. Red Wing defenseman moves it ahead to Warren. He has a power play goal in the series, but turned it over, and the Leafs come back short-handed. Hayes with Holmberg. Holmberg after the puck in the corner with Kirill Tutayev. Barton will pick it up calmly. We've got a penalty coming up to Detroit right now for holding. 
That means the Leafs will go on the power play in the next 21 seconds. So 21 seconds of four on four hockey and then the Leafs have their second power play of the game. Well, there's one thing I will say and I don't know the games that uh, you guys have called but over the three games the Leafs have played it's been a surprising amount. You know, when you talk mm -hmm. about 10, 11 power plays, there's mm -hmm. been a surprising amount of opportunities to see five on four, to see penalty kills, to see a lot of four on four hockey. So a real good opportunity for the scouts, which are plentiful. Yes. <laughs> they, for them to see these players react and adjust uh, in real time in, in, uh, in many different situations. Well, the tournament, for the most part, has been high scoring. The game that you called yesterday was a low scoring game that ended up in overtime. Unusual. I think the only game that ended up in overtime yes. this tournament. Kolkadin in, inside his own zone. Now the Leafs are on the power play. Slaggard heads over to the Leafs bench. And Toronto with a man advantage for a minute and 34. 6.05 to play in the opening period here in Traverse City. Glad you're in tune to the stream, and it's a 1 1 tie. Holmberg scoring for the Maple Leafs and Martin for Detroit. Rindell out to center ice, drops it to the trailer with speed. That's Minton. He carries over the Red Wing line, pushed it over to Lasowski, and he'll dump it into the corner. Minton collides with Bianca Batuka, the Red Wing defender. Sabrango in there trying to jam it loose, and Lasowski to play it to the blue line. This firing on the pass was Rindell. He took it over and back, and now the Leafs have to tag up. That gives the Red Wings more time to eat up the clock here, the penalty time. And finally, it's tipped down the ice by the Red Wings. Ivan, who's in out there on a penalty kill. That is one of those moments where you just simply cannot help yourself. You, you know it's out, mm -hmm. but you just think, well, if I just push it back in, maybe nobody was looking at it. It's just a... <laughs> you know, I like that rule change, though. We'll get to talk about that in a moment here. But uh, Minton fires the shot. He's had his chances here in the first period. And... Bednar made the save. Back in the day, they would whistle that play down, but now they keep the game going. They have that tag-up rule where you're allowed to tag up and yeah, then keep yeah. the game going. And that's the beauty of hockey, in my opinion, where you can go stretches of three, four, five minutes or more without a whistle. Yeah, the, fl the flow of the... I'm for anything. that increases the flow of the game. I know people have talked about uh, when it's a double icing right away that, the, that, you know, the icing, you get a penalty off that. And I, I'm for anything that just keeps the game moving along with less whistles. You think about it, it's the only professional sport that you can change while play is going on. And now the Red Wings trying to break again. Here is Soderblom coming back. Solid defensive play right there by Kokanen to steal the puck away. Yeah, a little bit of a throw over to uh, the folks from lacrosse who uh, go through that same yeah. thing. Puck driven down the ice. Cavalin hands it off to Kokanen. Five seconds to go on the Toronto power play. Kokanen to the trailer. Gerard Gachinsev up across the Detroit blue line. Red Wings are at full strength. Koken in from the right point. Stick candles his way. Gerard Gachinsev down low. Gets the feed off a stick. Comes back to the line to Koken in again. Then he turned it over. And the Wings will just slide it out to center. And Miller, the Maple Leaf defenseman, plays it ahead. Gogolev couldn't handle the pass. Out at center. Bounced off the boards. Down the ice. And it's an icing call charged against the Toronto Maple Leafs. I get lots of time over the next two weeks or maybe a little bit more to see what your NHL team is going to look like and how pieces are going to be added. Pieces, everybody loves their team at this point and, and just sees potential. And that's the great hope for the start of a new season of hockey. You just, if you have an idea of what your team can do, there's great hope. And, having them pull it off. There's a lot of that for the Red Wings right now with all the changes Steve Eiserman made over the summer and then guys like Simon Edvinson who everyone thinks might crack the NHL roster. Well, that's a good thing about watching this tournament live if you're here in Traverse City is you get an opportunity to see a young player that could possibly, it doesn't happen that often, but we've seen it with Mo mm -hmm. Sider, break into the National Hockey League and people are hoping Edmondson might have that same opportunity. Well, we were talking about the AHL and the experience that you gain in that league. I think sometimes people forget that Mo Sider played a full year in the AHL before he went over to the SHL and they're right. kind of expecting Simon to just make that jump without any AHL experience, which I think I want everyone to know it wouldn't be a bad thing if he spent some time in the AHL. No, and, and lots of times it is the Missing mystery piece. Uh, junior is very big in Canada, mm -hmm. and when players come out of junior, most of them end up uh, in the American Hockey League, and, and 
it's like they've gone mystery missing for some exactly. people. They, they don't pay enough attention to that, as I say, that master's degree that those players are getting in the game of hockey. Time will tell though, preseason will be huge for most of these Red Wings prospects. Douglas shoots it in and Bednar to sweep it over to Sobrango. Turned it over almost, it bounces into the corner. Bianca Patuka in after it. And so is Themis, the Maple Leaf forward. Bianca Patuka still battling along the boards. Minton in there for Toronto. Spins around Piercy, gets it again. Still work along the boards. Minton makes his way into the corner. Had a pretty strong period here in the opening frame. Yeah, and I think this is what they want from him in this game, is they want to see him be uh, the guy he, that he is in Kamloops. The Memorial Cup is in Kamloops this year, and uh, they expect big things from him in his junior career, and they expect to see a little bit of what he can bring. This is going to help him tremendously being in this tournament. He played with, as I say, Alex Steves, Nick Robertson, both guys who've had NHL games. Here's Vero. Along the near wing, brings it back to the right point. Mill the blue line, Klandowski, his shot blocked, and it's lifted by Minton down the ice. Lasowski racing for it, and Pasquale Zito in after it. will play it around the board. Now Mitchell, who has the goal for Detroit, poked it forward. Matthew back to um, Martin, or Martin picks it up and plays it along the left side as he shot the puck, and it was blocked, and the Leafs come back with it. Here is Holmberg over the line, moves in left circle, trying to feed it out in front. It was stopped by the wing's defense. Puck picked up by Barton, moved it up the wing out to center ice. The Edmondson jumping up on the play. Swagger checked right down below us by Martin. And now the Leafs up across the line again. Feed pass in front. Slagger moves into the corner, bumped it along the boards by big Eric Soderblom. Edmondson trying to jam the puck away. Still battling for it, that is uh, Ty Voigt, and now the wings out to center. Cross Hannes up the left side, carries over the blue line, moves it down low, in behind a Toronto goal, Hannes again, trying to get it to Soderblom, into the corner, it's stolen by Rafai, or Rafay rather, and now the Leafs bottled up in their own zone, Durarki Chintsev hands it off, and it's steered out to center ice. Gogolev, with a minute to go in the opening period and a 1-1 tie, pushed it over the Red Wing line. Quickly out to center ice. Over the line is Cross Hannes. Charges in towards the right circle. Shoved his man in along the boards and the puck comes around the near side. Now in the slot, Soderblom with a shot off the inside of the goal post. He almost put it in. He had the goaltender beat Cavalin and clanged it off the right post. I don't know how many times the Red Wings have hit the post in this tournament, but it has been incredible. Incredible. I know Kirill Tutayev hit one off the crossbar last game. Oh man. Well, and it was yesterday, in the third period, it, the chances that the Leafs got all ended up post, hair wide, crossbar. Mm. And it was, it, it was amazing. They had a 2-1 lead and just could not crack that next goal. And it ended up costing them, uh, as it turned out. But uh, the, they did get good quality scoring opportunities. A lot of breakaways in that game, too, in the third period. True game of inches, right, Dan? Absolutely. I said it all the time. And uh, that was a perfect feed and a you know, good positioning for Soderblom in the slot to try and score. Emil Vero from the left point scores! That may have been redirected right out in front. Vero shot the puck from the left point, and it beat Cavalin, a late goal for Detroit, and it's 2-1 to one Red Wings. Credit to Vero, he had to know the time was winding down in the period. He turns and just fires the puck in the general direction of the net, and sometimes that works, right? You get the deflection in, or you have traffic in front, and you're able to beat the goaltender. Yeah, the touch there, and that's a, t that's a tough goal. I mean, you know, the, as you say, there's no trophy handed out here, but nobody wants to give up a goal in this situation. Todd, we'll get a look at the replay right here as the puck came to the point. And oh, it was off the Toronto player. Yeah, I was going to say, it might have yeah. went off a defenseman. I did I did know that it did change direction. It didn't did. know if it was tipped or went off a Toronto player, but they're going to get Vero the goal, and it's a 2-1 to one lead with 10 seconds to go as play continues. Man who scored Vero in the corner. Worked it ahead. Wings break out to center ice. Here is Plandowski, and there goes the horn. Now Douglas eyeing up his man along the far side there, Trenton Bliss. And Douglas didn't like something about uh, Bliss, and they're still talking at each other as the linesmen separate those two. 
Not sure I'd be messing with Douglas. Todd, you let me in on a little fun fact that he's not really a fighter, yeah. but his dad was a boxer. Yeah. So when he does, well, he's good at it. <laughs> I have seen him uh, take on some tough customers, and he is a very smart uh, fighter when he gets into it. And he, he and he is not one of these guys that's goaded into things necessarily right. either. So uh, I... I, I like where he picks his moments and uh, his results speak for themselves. Mm -hmm. Well, we got the late goal from uh, Vero it, that makes it two to one in favor of Detroit. And it doesn't matter what team you are and whether you're playing in the National Hockey League, American League, or in the Prospects Tournament, you give up a goal or you score a goal, it could give your team a lift or it could be bad for your team as well. Well, and, and as I said, uh, I was talking this morning to some of the folks in the organization. And I said, it, it doesn't seem to matter. Once you actually get out on the mm -hmm. ice, you can't take the competitor out of the player, they, no. They, no matter what it is. And we've all seen them play cards or, or whatever it is, everything turns into a competition. Whether it's just kicking the ball around in the middle or whatever they're doing, they're invested. And, and there's no reason to think otherwise here. Well, that late goal is going to hopefully help the Red Wings leading into the second period. And again, just a smart play by Vero. He knew the time was winding down. He kind of, I don't even know if he looked before he turned and fired that puck, but it worked for him. It bounces into the back of the net, hopefully giving some momentum into the second period. And that's a good learning experience too. You know, yeah. you shoot the puck towards the front of the net, anything can happen. All right, we're going to throw it down to Carly Johnston, who has a special guest joining her right now. That's right. I'm here with Mitchell Martin, who got that breakaway goal right out of the box. What did you see there on that play? just came out of the box. I, I mean, it got pretty lucky. It hopped right over the D stick and saw part of the net and I shot it. So are we thinking while you were sitting in that box after that penalty, this is what I'm going to do if I see it on my end of the zone? Yeah, definitely. As I came out, I saw I was coming around and I was like, just, just <laughs> praying, like, please hop over a stick. So I was lucky. It was good. It was fortunate. Toronto Maple Leafs, they've really been on you guys. There's a lot of traffic in front of the net. Jan Bednar has been doing a fantastic job stopping the pucks. What's it been like being out there with this group of guys here? I mean, it's really good. Everybody, everybody's smart. We can make plays. You know, it's it's a lot quicker than the OHL what I'm used to. But I'm getting, I've gotten used to it, and now I feel like I'm playing good hockey. I've gotten better every period, and obviously we have a, a lot of confidence in Beds back there. He's he's quick and he's big, so we got a lot of confidence in him. Getting a good look at some of these special teams, a lot of penalty kills. But you guys have been killing them, doing a fantastic job on the special teams. What are you seeing out there when you guys have that group? Um, yeah, I mean, you. The power play, they got the five best guys on their team on the ice. So yep. you got to you gotta act quick. you got to get in shot sh uh, shooting lanes and, and just do your best to break up passes and just be dialed in. A guy of a bigger stature. There are a lot of go big guys out there. Do you feel that with the reach you guys have for the puck? Do you see that when going against some of the other big guys that the Toronto Maple Leafs have? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, being, bi being big is obviously an advantage. Mm -hmm. Got a long reach. Can protect pucks down low. But, yeah, there's, there's lots of big guys out here. And, yeah, it's definitely an advantage for sure. What are you hoping to see out of yourself and your team moving forward in the next 40 minutes of hockey? I mean, I'd love, I'd love a couple more goals, maybe have a four-goal game like Piercy. Um, but, yeah, just, just keep doing what we're doing, keep putting pucks to the net, and hopefully we come out on top here. Fantastic. Best of luck. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank and, you. Danielle, back to you. Thank you, Carly. That's awesome. He hopes for a couple more goals in a four-goal game. I think we all hope for that, right? All right, Mitchell Martin has 40 more minutes to, to net three more goals. I absolutely love that. So um, we'll be right back, though, with Chris Draper right after this break.
Welcome back inside Center Ice Arena here in Traverse City, Michigan for the 2022 Prospect Tournament presented by Huntington Bank. I'm Daniela Bruce alongside Ken Cal. And joining us right now, Director of Amateur Scouting, Chris Draper. Chris, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Daniela, Ken, thank you very much for having me. Appreciate it. It's always great to chat with you, Chris. And we'll start with this. We've got 40 minutes remaining in the Red Wings 2022 Tournament. What are your thoughts so far on what you've seen this year? You know what? I think it's been great. I think it's been a great showing for, for our players. You know, I was just sitting up there talking to, you know, both Dan Cleary and Nicholas Cronwell and just talking about how it looks like they, you know, for a couple practices, there's been a lot of great, you know, breakouts, you know, like clean, you know, it's been, there's been communication, which is very rare in something like this. You know, you're just kind of put together, you have a couple skates and then you come in and play, you know, and, and I think it shows you, uh, you know, the skill and sense of some of the mm -hmm. players that we have on the back end there, which is fun to watch. You know, they get the puck, they move it fast, they want to join the rush. I thought, you know, throughout the tournament, our team is, has played fast. They look really organized. They look competitive. And it's uh, we've been able to score some nice goals, which is great. And I think uh, for all of us sitting up there, it's been, uh, you know, entertaining to watch our group play so far. Chris, some players that the fans are really focusing in on, one of them's defenseman uh, Simon Edmondson, the other is Elmer Soderblom. From uh, a management point of view, Chris, what is your take on both of those players? Well, first of all, you can't miss either of them. Both <laughs> uh, some pretty big boys Twin there. Towers, right? Uh, exactly, yeah. You know what, I think, um, you know, obviously very excited to get Elmer over here. I think his development has been uh, been incredible since we drafted him. Uh, you know, he's just, uh, he's, he's a, a mountain of a man. His skating has really improved. He's playing... You know, in all situations last year, he obviously had, you know, a, a breakout year in, in Forlunda scoring, a, you know, a lot of goals and a lot of big goals for that organization and relied upon a lot. He got an opportunity to play with the Swedish uh, men's national team, which is obviously a huge confidence builder. So I would say everything that Elmer's done has, uh, you know, prepared him to, you know, to compete for, for the Detroit Red Wings this spot. And, you know, that's what we're hoping for. So we're really looking forward to watching him. Uh, you know, not only here, but as, uh, you know, training camp starts, when main camp starts, and more importantly, in the exhibition season as well. And then for Simon, you know, it's been great. We just saw him probably about a month ago in, uh, in Edmonton at the World Juniors. Um, you know, just a defenseman that we're really excited about, you know, the way we want to play. He's obviously he's got, he's got tremendous size. He's got a great gift of, of how he can skate for, for such a big man. He's so smooth. Um, you know, and the thing that we really like about him is, he he has a he has a good feel for when he's played when he plays well and when he hasn't played well and when he plays well he takes it in stride and and when he struggles a little bit he knows why and probably his first <laughs> call or text is to to Nicholas Cronwell or Nick Lidstrom and he wants to do video right away and I mean that's something you know that you really you you really get excited about a player like that that has you know the size the sense the skill and the way he skates but he also expects a lot from himself and 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 when he doesn't perform. To where he wants to be immediately you know he, he wants to wants to fix it and that's something that uh, is obviously going to serve him well going forward having nick lidstrom and nick cronwall on speed dial when you want to watch video isn't, isn't as a, a defenseman thing, not right? bad right yeah, no not bad at all let's talk wait, wait wait who, who did you call when you yeah. thought <laughs> that's what i wanted to i had to call my dad <laughs> <laughs> no one else, no one would take my calls <laughs> not at first at yeah, least yeah, yeah exactly not at first yeah let's talk some goaltending jan bednar and sebastian kosa both having a great tournament we expect that we'll see a little more of sebastian kosa before mm -hmm. this game is over yep. and he's been impressive and that's huge for him right we've talked about it before last year's prospect tournament wasn't the greatest for him yep. struggled a little bit at development camp so playing in front of you guys here in Traverse City he was impressive in his first outing he was uh probably the most you know confident and composed that that mm -hmm. you know we've seen him outside of playing for Edmonton and mm -hmm. I think that that was something that uh you know he needed to do you know for, for himself and I think uh it's a credit to him um we offered up the, the opportunity to come to Detroit, you know, be around, you know, NHL players, be around Phil Osir, be around our goaltending coach, uh, be at the rink every mm -hmm. day, you know, and just really learn about what it takes to be a pro. And, you know, to Costa's credit, he jumped at that right away. He did it from development camp, uh, stayed, uh, stayed, stayed all the way through, went to World Juniors, came back afterwards until we came up to Traverse City. And, you know, that's something that you want to see. You know, there, there's obviously, he, he, like we just talked about with both Elmer and Sider, Simon, he has you know the size there's a lot that you have to like about them but it's a it's a huge jump for for all these guys and that's the one thing that you have to realize and especially for a goaltender so uh Jan Bednar has uh you know what a great start for him yeah. to the tournament the other night he played great obviously made some big saves here he had some some great saves both of them you know it's it looks like there's a nice friendly competition there what you like to see and they're going to challenge one another but uh for Coase I think it was real important for him to 
get off to that start uh, of, of what he had, and, and we're looking uh, you know, for him to do the same thing here in uh, his second half of the game against the Leafs. Real quick, Chris, uh, I know we only got about a minute to go here, but um, in the month of November coming up, there's going to be quite a reunion, the Stanley Cup champion, 97-98 <laughs> uh, Stanley Cup champs, which yeah. you were a part of. Uh, you have to be tickled about uh, being a part of that. Absolutely. Uh, as soon as I, I got the invite, invite from uh, Jimmy Devilano, I, I went to Stevie and said I need the week off, <laughs> and, and I might need another week off after. Well, Maltz too, right? I mean, he's scouting. Well, Maltz is automatic. You know, uh, I, we can't wait. Uh, you know, to see uh, you know to see all the guys that are coming in. It's going to be an unbelievable uh, you know reunion for all of us. I mean, that uh, that meant so much. So many good times. We actually were at dinner last night and just kind of. Going down memory lane, it was uh, it was fantastic. So we're all looking forward to be a part of it. Can you believe 25 years? And we're celebrating the 25th anniversary at Little Caesars Arena on November 3rd and November 5th. You can get tickets at DetroitRedWings.com. And Chris is going to be there. A bunch of the other alumni are going to be there. But 25 years, oh, yeah. it just doesn't it's, feel like it. Well, it's funny because then... Clears was talking about having the 2008 reunion like this, and I'm like, well, like Slow Nick and I will be like wheeling in there in our wheelchairs and stuff. But uh, you know, yeah, it was uh, it's it's incredible. You know, so fortunate to be a part of those teams. The you know the incredible players that I was fortunate to play with, and, and not only winning in '97 but back to back in in '98. Uh, you know, is is incredible. And you know, we can't uh, we can't wait to all get together. Probably the last time that we did it was probably you know Colorado for the outdoor game. We had a lot of guys yeah. that showed up for that and. You know, it's just automatic. You just, uh, you know, right away you have so much fun and the memories and the stories and everything that we have. It's uh, it's incredible, and we're, we're looking forward to being a part of that. Well, it's a great group of guys. I can attest to that. So it's going to be <laughs> exciting to have you all in the yeah. same place for that weekend, November 3rd and November 5th at Little Caesars Arena. Chris, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Thanks, Danielle. Thanks, Thanks. Dan. Yep. Appreciate it, as always. All right, fans, we'll be right back. We've got a 2-1 game. Second period action is just a couple of minutes away. This one. Yeah, all right, so we're back at the arena. I know you guys have some training to do, so I'll see you guys at that. I'll see you in a couple weeks for training camp. Yep. Right, welcome back to Center Ice Arena here in Traverse City, Michigan. 2022 Prospect Tournament is presented to you by Huntington Bank. Daniela Bruce alongside Ken Callen rejoining us. Todd Crocker, the voice of the Toronto Marlies. I don't know if you were listening into that conversation with Chris Draper, but we are celebrating the 25th anniversary of the 97-98 back-to-back Stanley Cup championships for Detroit. Getting all of those alumni back to Little Caesars Arena, even though a lot of them still work in the organization, so that's pretty fun. Well, that speaks to the quality of an organization more than anything else. Just the idea that when you have champions, you know the pathway, know how to get there, know the work, and the effort every single day. When you have that kind of championship pedigree, the organization recognizes it and rewards it. Yeah, fans, one more time. That is November 3rd and November 5th at Little Caesars Arena. You can get your tickets at DetroitRedWings.com. And we're going to hand the play-by-play -play reins over to Todd for this second period. We'll try and uh, keep pace. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. 2-1 game, 22 seconds to uh, chat about here before we roll into this second period. And we're talking about... a. Uh, Fourth game for the Toronto Maple Leafs. We're talking about a third game for the Detroit Red Wings. Both clubs will head to their respective spots as far as training camp is concerned. Some of the players will uh, get a chance to take a breather. Other players straight into the NHL training camp. The wings happening right here in Traverse City. And the Leafs uh, back in Toronto. Here's Max Ellis trying to scramble to get to that puck, but handled nicely by the wings as Warad gets to it. And Barton turns around, 
Doing the lifting on the play. Back up along the wall, chipped up and out. We'll see what kind of adjustments the coaching staff can make. And then, of course, just their assessment of whether it was picked up and employed by both clubs. Ellis stepping through the middle. Just sends it in as the Leafs want to make a change on this one. Barton again, long pass up to Tataev. Just grazes his stick and is played by Cavillan as the Leafs try to move it back up and out. A little extra effort to do just that, but it doesn't get very far. Piercy back across the line. Trying to hold it off the wall. Axel Rindell working on him. Holmberg sweeps at it, gets it up the board, but not out. Tataya puts it down low, calling for it out front. The puck comes in, but doesn't follow the rest of the plan. Tataya on his backhand, works his way back up to the blue line, drops it off with Plandowski. And back out front it comes, but Kokanen the only one there in the white jersey. Wearing practice jerseys this week, or that's kind of the look of the training camp jersey. They want to make you feel like you've earned that jersey when you get to it at the National Hockey League level, and that's kind of the concept behind wearing these jerseys for the Leafs organization. Darga Chinsev through the middle. Steps on the gas a little bit, moves it to Hayes, and he fires one, but it's up and over the snowbank. Yeah, you mentioned Ellis, Todd, and uh, the guy that comes to mind is Ron Ellis, who oh, yeah. I don't know if uh, a lot of our uh, younger listeners know who Ron Ellis was, but what a great player he was back in the day with the Toronto Maple Leafs during the original six. Well, and you you know, those are the days that uh, I think people can look back in Toronto and, and you see a lot of people of a certain age, they, that's, the, that's the memories that they want to capture. And, they pass that along and they want to see that championship level return to Toronto. They've been an awfully good team in the regular season. I know they want to go deeper in the playoffs and that's kind of their goal this year. So Todd, for those that are just tuning into the stream, we talked about it earlier, how there are some scratches for the Leafs in this fourth game of the tournament, the only right. team to play four games. So the big names like an Alex Steves are not out there today because they're getting ready for training camp. Yeah, as you say, and, and there's a lot of effort that goes into training camp. As much as nobody shows up uh, 20 pounds overweight with a six pack of beer in their car, they, uh, they, they uh, these Sounds guys like my car. I was gonna say that Ken, <laughs> only Ken Cal shows up to training camp like that. <laughs> it's a 12 pack of beer though. The, uh, these guys, you know, they, they show up on point, ready to go. A lot of them have already been in Toronto. A lot of them been practicing all summer long. You know, trying to get uh, to a point where their game improves. And that's not just the guys out here that are prospects, but you're also battling against guys who are doing that at the professional level, making sure they stay in the spot that they are required to be in. Dropped in, icing called, and they'll bring it all the way back on the free ride. You know, Chris Draper talked about it during intermission, and this will reign true for every team in the prospect tournament, that each team only has a couple of practices before they get out here and play and try to build that chemistry and for Detroit he was impressed with the way that they were able to do that so quickly and I'm sure you saw the same with Toronto. Well and I think it helps that that everybody plays the system. Right. So whatever the system that gets put employed by the organization and the coaching staff at each level that's usually the system that gets played everywhere. It doesn't always translate because the players of course uh, make up a big part of why you would employ a system. Got a uh, delayed penalty coming up here. Martin comes over and grabs that one up. Slashing call going to be handed out here, and the Leafs will go on the power play. The yeah, Leaf player had his stick just slashed out of his hands, and uh, let's try to get the guilty party. Red Wing penalty box door swings open, and uh, the Leafs go on that power play as you described, Todd. So I've given it to the guys down there by the penalty box who are eating all the lifesavers. Uh, Giant oh yeah, bag well they are. Week and <laughs> they, they came upstairs today and I pick all the orange ones out. I'm a big big fan of that. Well, well no Red Wing has made their appearance into the penalty box so the referee has to skate over to the bench and this is where if you're a referee you better know the number that uh, caused the infraction. <laughs> well it's almost like somebody has to be convinced here. 
to it, uh, step into the box. Well, we talked about it before. Michael Martin, I think. They yeah. never admit to it, right? They no. will never admit admit to, to the penalty. They no, but that no was wrong. a strong holdout. Right yeah. on the bench. I'm just going <laughs> to blend in here. You won't see me. Last time Martin got a penalty, he came out of the box and scored on a breakaway. And he tries to fire that one in. He's out. Holmberg out as well, and it is cleared. Rindell comes all the way back. And again, these are, this isn't even the power play that existed for the previous three games. A lot of new faces working a power play here. So you have no choice but to keep it as simple as you possibly can. I would imagine, though, that the players enjoy the experience if they haven't been on the power play oh. to get some power play time. You bet. Here's Ty Voigt moving it along. Long cross ice pass. Voigt turning. And Minton didn't get all of that at all. Here's Voigt again. Minton looks in close, and he was hoping to get that to get off a skate. It did, but it went just slightly wide, if not barely touched. Working it back up the wall. Rindell spreads it out a little bit. Over the far side. Voigt steps in. He's got a goal in this tournament. Tries to move it back through the middle, but that collapses on him. Rindell back to Voigt. Moves it quickly. Minton sent it wide and trying to scramble over to get his stick on that and keep it in, but unsuccessfully so was Rindell. Darga Chinsep scrambling. But that one all the way back down the ice. Tatayev was late to jump in on the PK. Nearly got himself a breakaway. Good play by Soderblom right there. Speaking of breakaways, here's Gogolev. Backhand. He was hoping to go sneaky on the five hole. Turned aside. Not good save by Bednar yeah. right there. He did a good job of tracking that puck and making sure he had the right angle on it. Picking up Darga Chinsev again. He's been a good playmaker. He'd like to shoot a little bit more this season, but has some great connection points. Deceptive player, Bliss, comes back with Soderblom. Backhander, and that is turned away. Well, I thought he was going to shoot the puck. He had an opening if he shot. Instead, he made the move. Famous. After it as he tries to get this one past Vero. Things are able to get it back up and out. Larson comes all the way back. Almost six minutes in here to the second period. Five on five hockey, Lombardi. It was in a great spot, but just a little tip. Moves it out of the way. McGurn goes after it here. Onto the stick, Pimas back the other way. Douglas leads it down into the near side of the rink. Bemis out of the corner. Knocked down on the play. McGurn tries to get back to it, but some good play from the wings. Bianca Batuka steps out of the corner, moves it back up. Nice. Here come the wings three wide. Unable to get it inside the zone. Turn away. Douglas in the way of that one. Really threw his shoulder into it. You almost have to have a bend it like Beckham shot to get it around <laughs> That's them. right. Which is harder to do with a hockey <laughs> stick than it is a soccer just, ball. Just a little. <laughs> Flips back at the blue line. Van Bleet moves it back. Little idea to slow it down and get organized, not let the game get away from anybody here. And now we've got a problem here behind the play and a whistle as Piercy and Van Bleet get tied up with each other and now discussing a terms of surrender, it looks like. Riley Piercy mixing it up again. He did that in the game against Dallas, the 5-4 loss to Dallas, but he had, he had a nice little scrum in that one, too. Let's take a look at the uh, Gogolev opportunity here that uh, Bednar made the save on. We'll get the replay for you up and running in a moment, but uh, it was a good opportunity, and... Bednar came up with a save. Well, Gogolev's one of those players that has the has the ability to get to the net, has good a good scoring touch. He's one of those guys who was an 85-point guy in junior, 40 goals. He can do it. Just got to find the touch. Mint steps over. A little bit of communication there between the two players. 
That's the kind of thing that as you move along in a season, it just seems to happen with mental telepathy. But Mint across the line. Lazowski stays on side. They closed on him pretty quick, but they don't get it out without the touch on the high stick and the whistle on the play. Let's go back just a couple of minutes into this game. There was a play around the boards in the Toronto zone, and uh, little things make a difference in the game that uh, sometimes the fans don't see. But um, McGurn made a good play to use his body to fend off a check and get in the right position to make the outlet pass out of his own zone. If he plays that wrong, the Red Wings have the opportunity to keep it alive. So just a smart heads-up play by McGurn. And again, it's a little thing that makes a difference during the course of the game. Yeah, and it's amazing how many of those things at this point in the season are in the relearning process. You may already know it, you just haven't done it in a while, in a game situation. And so the faster you get to your feet on some of those opportunities, you know, the better off it's gonna be in a complete season. On the Red Wings end, Bianca Batuka has been really good. And I saw him make a play in the corner where he was able to escape some pressure and find the outlet pass too. And that's something that it takes experience, like you said. You know it, but you've got to relearn it, redo it, and get into the groove. Yeah, now is oftentimes not the time where you see a lot of patience. And and I think that uh, I recall the same play, and I thought, well, oh, that's a good patient play he makes there, especially for a guy who comes in late, who wants to make an impression, wants to be noticed. Well, he's been noticed, at least by us, <laughs> so that's good. <laughs> Bokina pulls it back up the wall, chips it along. Gogolev tries to push a little bit further, didn't make contact. There's Biaka Batuka right now. Hayes got it off the foot, turns around, he's got Gogolev there, but the puck takes a walk on him. Leafs get the puck back, stealing it along. Gargachinsev has Gogolev going to the goal, he's gonna take the shot, doesn't get through traffic. Trying to get the mid on it is Bednar, but could not. And now back at the line, Kokonen just lifts one toward the goal. That one redirected back over, and Gogolev's eyes got high plate. Good block by Sabrango there in front of Bednar in that last play. Off into the corner. A little bit wide open here at the moment. Biakabatuka with a big shot from a long way away, but it is handled by Cavalin. There he is again, just talking about Bianca Batuka and his patience in his own defensive zone, and now he's contributing offensively, being able to throw that puck at the net. Obviously, goaltender was seeing it well, able to make that stop. Not enough traffic in front, but a nice play to see him jump up in the offense. Now we're almost halfway into this one, and uh, we're going to stick with Bednar here at the moment. We're expecting to see Sebastian Kosa make an appearance for the second half of this game, as the Red Wings have done with their goaltenders. All right, from Carly Johnston down ring side. She just told us that Sebastian Cosa is indeed getting ready to hop into this game. Just hopped off his stool, putting his helmet on. So we should see him in a few minutes. Kataev with the shot. Cavalin staying in the game and staying focused. Comes bouncing back. Refai has to chase it back the other way, but couldn't quite get back to the player. Scramble out front and the puck. Still below the goal line, moved up to Barton. Makes a move to the wall. Max Ellis trying to track it down for the Leafs. Step out, up high, long shot off the pads. And a good offensive exchange, Edmondson, with a good shot to finish it up. Scramble in front and uh, getting bodies. We saw that earlier from the Leafs in the opening period, getting bodies to the front of the net. We're gonna get that goaltender change now. How about the play of Bednar, Daniela? Just unbelievable, he allowed one goal in uh, the whole tournament. And he made a big save on that Gogolev breakaway that kept this game two to one Detroit. That's right, at the start of the Dallas game, which the Red Wings did end up losing with the final score of 5-4, but he played very well. And Todd, it looks like we're gonna see a goaltender change for Toronto as well. Yeah, we're gonna see Marco Costantini, who was with the Hamilton Bulldogs. Uh, they made a run to the Memorial Cup final, eventually losing the final to the St. John Sea Dogs. Willem Villeneuve, William Villeneuve was on that team. He's with the team here in Traverse City as well. And uh, Constantini, good reason, solid player, stays calm. Ken, you know one thing I like is how Sebastian Cosa looks in the red pads. They look good on him, don't they? <laughs> they do. <laughs> he had a good year again with the Edmonton Oil Kings, 33-9-3. That 
save percentage at 9-1-3. I think he had five or six shutouts. So they had a really good team, the Edmonton Oil Kings, and he had a really good performance in his first game that he played in, Sebastian Cosa, and the Wings are expecting the same here in the second half against Toronto. Now we'll see here for Constantine. He's a free agent invite. Yep. So he's getting a look here as well in this fourth and final game. Geez, he had 31 wins for Hamilton last yeah, year. Yeah, he did. He, he, it, they, it was such a good team in front of him as well. And they ran into, uh, in the Memorial Cup, uh, for those who don't know, it is uh, a tournament where four teams go. The champion from each league, each junior league. Boyd moving that one along as the Leafs get in close and into the pads and hanging around, but cleared away as the Wings get it back out of the zone. And, and then the host team, which in this case, St. John had been off for a month mm -hmm. in between uh, the Memorial Cup and the playoffs. So they didn't get any playoff games in, during their own uh, Quebec League finals and uh, came in, got to play uh, five games uh, in, the, in the Memorial Cup final and the Bulldogs uh, out of Hamilton played those five games as well and had to play the night before. So St. John was just in a better spot, I think, to, yeah. uh, to take the win. And if that sounds biased, it's because I grew up in Hamilton. <laughs> well, back in the day, I remember <laughs> Hamilton used to be the Wings Farm Club back in the day. That's right. That's right. The Hamilton Red Wings. Yeah. Games of the Barton Street form. In close. Oh. Side of the goal. I forgot I was calling Ooh. play by play here. <laughs> oh. Collision at the back of, of the goal, and now some exception being taken. Van Vliet, and the two of them get in close to it. Martin got in a couple of shots there, but Van Vliet looks like he's a guy who can take a hit and keep coming. Martin, third trip to the penalty box. That all started with a big hit. And I believe that Leaf player was at Larson, who was in behind the goal that got hit. And then so. Van Fleet came in there and answered Van, the bell. Van Fleet, Van Fleet having his uh, teammates back on that one, so he takes on Martin. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, quite the, quite the shot. I think we might need to tell uh, Mitchell Martin that to score, he doesn't have to go to the penalty box. <laughs> That's Every just the, that's, a, that's the <laughs> recipe. This is the recipe that worked the first time. I know. Sometimes you get some of those YouTube recipes. Yeah. It's like it worked the first time and it looked exactly like this. Right. Next time, <laughs> not so much. Well, you got to give Noah Van Fleet uh, credit there for answering the bell after he didn't like what Martin did to his teammate. Yep. Well, sure. And that's one of the things that. Uh, sometimes it's a bit of a head scratcher and talks about the competitive level of all these guys. It's the passion that gets injected into some of these games. Uh, you don't expect it. I know. The willingness to go to bat for each other like that, too, is something that I feel like you see so often in hockey. It's, yeah. it's, they always do it. Yeah, and, and I mean, it doesn't matter if you're Saturday night at the local rink playing with a bunch of guys. You're on the same team together for that 60 minutes, and that's all that matters. Exactly. Martin's been in the penalty box three times already today. Yeah. Like I said, it. he thinks he's going to score when he gets out. I think that's that's what's going on here. It's all, all evened hey, up, though. There's Carly again with a great point going for the Gordie Howe hat trick. All he needs <laughs> is an assist now, right? <laughs> he throws in it. There's nothing that uh, gets people... Uh, a little excited than to, to, to be able to say, oh, geez, you know, look what I did, and it put a label on it. Oh, yeah. That's okay. It's still five on five here, and just to clear that up, if anybody had a misconception that the hit was uh, added on to that situation. You know, Todd, pretty even hockey game. Both teams with nine shots on goal, two to one Detroit, and uh, penalties have been pretty even, too, and throughout the course of this game. Tightly Ellis. contested. Turns around, lets one go, but on the second attempt, the goaltender, Casa, sees it all. Yeah. He's getting a little heated uh, over the last couple minutes here. Well, we talked about it pregame. The rivalry runs deep it between does. these two teams. It always does. It does. It's, it, it's, it's fascinating. I'm always 
Uh, I'm always amazed that you can come to a tournament. Your whole idea is to, there goes Larson down back into the room, by the way. Uh, not available for Manny Malhotra and crew. Long shot, not a lot of traffic, and a good eye on it. You know, I think things got heated because at the end of the period, Douglas and Trenton Bliss. Right. Uh, it, it, Bliss was upset with the fact that Douglas laid a check on him right at the conclusion of the period, and it seemed to kind of carry over into the second period here. Things got a little bit heated. Up at the blue line and out. Trying to force it back across the line was Minton. Now Bliss gets a hold of it. And neither team seems too intent on letting either one get across the blue line. Broken up. It gets into the Toronto zone. Lafay able to move it. Puck comes dancing back out through the neutral zone. Piercy back after it. Lazowski trying to get to it. Minton does. Here's Ellis as he lets one go off the pads. He's looking for a little help on the rebound. Minton tried to pin it into the corner. Quick up. That one got through the rafters. I don't think it made any contact, but that hardly mattered. It, uh, it got up there in where the pigeons reside. You know, what's amazing is that uh, we're seeing goaltenders change halfway through the hockey game. And I, I think if you're a goaltender, you know you're going to come in at the 10 minute mark of the second period. You have time to prepare. The difference is when you're in the National Hockey League or in the American League and you have to make a change and you're cold and you don't know that you're going to play, boy, that's the tougher part for a goaltender. It's fascinating but it's because, of course, you know, with pitching, you warm up, you kind of get an idea. Maybe you don't go in or things calm themselves down, but you never know. Yeah, <laughs> well, there's, well, there is that too. Not playing this in the heat of Texas. The Akabatuka picking it up here. Trying to skate it out of deep territory. Let's organize it up here. 2-1 the score. Well, that one goes out of play. Seven, a little over seven minutes to go here in this second period. Say the wings will stay here and be a part of the training camp in Traverse City. A six, seven hour bus ride home for these folks that have joined this team. And then it starts Wednesday for the Leafs with uh, the training camp. So these guys really get a day off and then right back to it and, uh, and get it ramped up real quick. What about Matthews? Uh, he had 60, 60 goals over 60 goals last year. Do you think he can keep up the pace this year for the Toronto Maple Leafs? I do. I, I, I really think he is uh, on another level of his play and is, and is in the prime to do even better. And there's lots of people say, well, now people, he's on their radar. It's like if Austin Matthews wasn't on your radar before. <laughs> uh, I think maybe you better check your scouting department. Yeah, he's been on the radar for a very long time. Kind of like Connor McDavid, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think we better focus on one guy over there. Might be him. Miller a long way away, but he lets it fly, and it went wide, but Hayes knocked over at the end of the play, and Sabrango gets into a chit-chat with him about it, but uh, nothing comes of it. Donovan Sabrango is an interesting player in this tournament for the Red Wings. He was scratched on Saturday against Dallas and now playing here today. But he was in the AHL last season due to his, or maybe a couple seasons ago, I'm thinking, when his junior league was shut down, he was able to play in the AHL during the COVID season, which really helped him improve. And last year, when we were talking with Chris Draper and Dan Cleary, they said that I think he was hit hard by how hard of a league the AHL is. So he's yeah. working on getting bigger and stronger, but he's a veteran defenseman on this prospect tournament team here wearing the A today. Well, and I think, you know, Danielle, I think a lot of players went through that exact same thing in, in right. what I call the season that shall not be named. The, uh, <laughs> uh, there were no playoffs. A lot of players out of junior. The AHL didn't look because of the taxi squads like it usually looks. Right. And when the league jumped back into full play, Full talent, very hard to keep up. It was a bit of an eye-opener for sure for a lot of guys. Right, it'll be a big year for those players this season in the AHL now that they've had a taste of what the AHL is actually like. Good kick from Ellis to get it up ice, but the puck won't cooperate in the snow. 
Back across the line. Wings get it back. Warrat takes it down the wall. Sends an investigator up there, but it didn't make contact. That was Soderblom who tried to redirect in front, but he was covered by the Leafs defense. Bokanen using that strength to try and keep that puck against the wall and keep it from going anywhere until help arrives. It does. Rindell flips it up to the line, but not out. Plandowski, this one does hop across the blue line, and Ellis plays it in as the Leafs go for a change. Edmondson all the way up, trying to get a step in behind the D. Puck ends in the air, and now Miller picks it up and pries it off the wall. McGurn across the line with Femis. Looks in, shoots low. Comes to it again. And he talked about that smart play that he made earlier. And there's one and he hopes goes in, but also designed to keep the puck alive. Yeah, smart play right there. And uh, those are the little things that happen during the course of the game that can help your club. Miller plays it in, Giro moves it back up along the near side and out. Rubbed out along the boards, Bliss by Miller. A whistle on contact along the bench with 424 remaining. Spanskin Kosa came in halfway through the period and uh, you know, he's played pretty well here. The Leafs have tested him since he came mm -hmm. into the game and uh, you know he's a pretty athletic goaltender, covers the net pretty well and doesn't give the shooters a lot to shoot at and that's mainly because of the size. He's a six foot five foot goaltender. Ken, you talked about Elmer Soderblom and driving to the net. Here's another play that he got in close, obviously didn't convert, but Look, that's just showing his sheer size, how he's able to get around those defensemen and get right in front of the goaltender testing him. Well, it almost reminds you of basketball there. He was boxing yeah. somebody out. He, was, he just gets a good opportunity there to use the skates in that situation. A vastly more difficult thing to do uh, when you're able to be pushed sliding along on your skates. Of course, I've always liked the Lou Alcindor when he was Lou Alcindor, not Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. The hook yeah. shot, he was a master at that. Yeah, UCLA, and you saw him come along in the 70s and just be the dominant player that he came out of, uh, he came out of university, and it was just, uh, I'd never seen a guy like yep. him. Waiting for the puck to drop. Here with a little over four minutes to go, a little conversation and education from the linesman. What do you think he's telling them right there? Where are you going after the game or yeah. what? Yeah. <laughs> where did you where did you eat lunch yesterday? Huh? <laughs> any Give me cherries when you're in Traverse City. <laughs> any <or>? restaurant recommendations? <laughs> yeah, any of those answers will do. Yeah, I started to go through all the cherry recipes the other day. Uh, and all the cherry things that cherry, I started to sound like that scene from Forrest Gump. Uh, it was just like, well, there's broiled shrimp and this shrimp and that shrimp. Same thing with cherries. It's like, well, you can make this and <laughs> Rindell. Cherry everything. Tom. Oh, yeah, cherry yeah. Everything. Well, it's, uh, as I said, I made uh, cherry bruschetta <laughs> or bruschetta. And, uh, somebody's going to roast me on that one. <laughs> Rindell. Trying to take that shot in from an odd angle. Right back the other way. Tataev with speed, closing fast on the backhand. Just didn't have enough juice on it to get it toward the goal. Picked up from behind, feeding it back out front. Good intent with the puck here, the wings. But Voigt gets a piece of it, moves it out. It rides an edge and a race to it as Holmberg didn't quite have the step that he wanted to catch up to it. Zito sends it in. Was racing after it himself. Seems like the energy here, a bit of a direction from the bench perhaps to ramp it up just a little bit here in the last three minutes of play. Almost like putting on the full court press. Yep. Now's the time. Ooh, that flip up. Talk about shot blocks. That was Zito right there. Hayes tried to flip it through the man, Edmondson, but uh, got a good piece of it. Hayes again trying to come back through the middle. Some work here for Martin on the far side. Flips it across the line, but it's broken up, and now Miller back the other way. Here's Hayes off the wall looking for options, leaning in with a big shot, Rafay. 
As it's Gogolev down in the corner. He had a good Ooh, run Evanson, earlier. Evanson's limping a little bit. Turn around shot, flips up. It's in the mix, but it's sent right back out of the zone. Edmondson's staying is, in the play, but he is limping a little bit. Yeah, he, he looked like he was pretty intent on getting back to the bench. Off the stick. You hope maybe that's like a wind knocked out of him situation or something like that. Van Vliet. Lazowski moves it around. Good cycle here from the Leafs. Ellis cuts back in. The nice thought on the play is it pops loose. And now here come the wings again. Great opportunity in close, scores! Hannes comes up with the goal. And Marshall Rappé not happy with how that one came about. Not 100% sure why he complains to the referees here on this one, but let's take a look. Yeah, looking back at that, Cross Hannes is just a goal scorer. This was a nice finish inside, goes five hole. I think Rafay is thinking that's offside. Yeah. Fortunately, I don't think we have video replay yeah. here for this <laughs> tournament. But uh, it's amazing because Toronto had all kinds of pressure. Evanson was trying to get over to the Red Wing bench and uh, that puck was in the Red Wing zone for quite a long time. Then the wings come back the other way. Hannes scores to make it three to one. Cross Hannes scored a lot in the WHL this season. He had six, or last season, I should say, 63 games played, 86 points. Here's another look that will tell us if this was, in fact, offside, and it might be by a hair. No. And it's close. Not offside, I don't think, though. Very close, though. There's, an argue, there's a good argument if uh, that somebody working on some sort of digital platform that can clean that up, <laughs> identify everybody. <laughs> I'm pretty sure law enforcement has the ability to do it. Anyway, <laughs> it's, uh, in a tournament like this, as I say, you, you know, you're still competitive in this situation, but the <laughs> Leafs now have a hole to dig themselves out of, of two goals with a minute 15 left to go and another late period success. Just to go back to Edmondson, uh, they're looking at him on the bench, and maybe Carly can get some information for us. But uh, apparently he blocked the shot, and that's yeah, why he was it, sore. Yeah, it did look like that slap shot that came through from the point. Boyd lifts it cross ice. Bliss knocks it down as they turn it back around and continue to apply that pressure. They had a good run there, and you thought that if they were going to have success they when they were applying that pressure but you're right Ken it was just the Leafs seemed to have it in the in the wing zone for so long and then once that pressure released that's when they got their opportunity I don't know if that was a breakdown in coverage or just a good play by the wings to catch the Leafs target chin set And now we got a penalty coming up as Lombardi gives it the touch. Tripping is going to be the call. And with 14 seconds left to go, we'll see if the Leafs' power play can pull them back to within one. It was Noah Van Vliet who was uh, upended on the play. Here's a look at the tripping call on Riley Piercy. Piercy stuck the leg out, took yeah. his legs out from underneath him. Uh, well after the puck is gone. And Unnecessary play there for sure. Going to find himself down a goal. They're down two goals here, and we'll see if the power, power play can finally find a little bit of success. If the score is 3-1 for everyone currently listening to the stream. It is 3-1 in favor of Detroit. Constantini comes all the way out to play that one, and then... The Leafs, I don't think, will get much of an opportunity. They won't. So after 40 minutes of play, a couple of goals by the Wings have them up 3-1. And a, a good pace in that middle frame between both clubs, both of them having uh, decent opportunities to uh, put the puck in the net. 
Wings having this success. Yeah, well, Todd, there is an opportunity for Toronto now, too. They will start the third period with a minute 50 left in a power play, a minute 47 to be exact. Well, and you have nothing more to do after this. Right. You've got 20 minutes of hockey left in the books. You might as well throw everything in here because all you're going to do is get on a bus for the next seven hours. So. Yeah. Get it out of you. Yeah, Get everything you got. You. Everything you got in the next 20. Ken, what'd you like about the Red Wings in that period? Well, I thought the tempo really picked up for both teams, and I thought uh, that you know, both teams play a little more physical than they did in the first mm -hmm. period. Tempers seemed to flare a little bit. Uh, Red Wings made the best of their opportunity, especially on that uh, goal by Hannes. And mm -hmm. Todd, you and I, and Danielle, were talking about how much pressure the Leafs had. I thought Kosa made some pretty good saves to keep the shut the door on the Detroit Red Wings. And Bednar was terrific, uh, only giving up one goal in the whole tournament so far. So that's a bright spot for Detroit. You know, I was able to ask some fans that are tuning into the stream right now via YouTube who they thought was the MVP of the tournament. And the answers I'm getting are Cross Annis, Almer Soderblom, Amadeus Lombardi, and we even got Riley Piercy. And then one person said the broadcast team. <laughs> so I was like... I, Thank you. you I, know, don't, we, I don't think my mom's <laughs> online, but I, somebody must be could typing be my it for mom. Her. It, it could <laughs> be my mom. Who knows? But, yeah, thank you. And a, a big shout-out to our video crew, too. Obviously, it's a, a big thing to bring you guys all of the, the streams here from Traverse City. And right now we're going to go down to our fourth member of the broadcast team, Carly Johnston, who's joined by the Red Wings goal scorer in that second period. That's right. Cross with the only goal scored in that second period. You got... Two goals now in the tournament. How are you feeling so far? Yeah, feeling better. I think uh, period by period, just keep getting better. And uh, I don't know, it's kind of showing them what I can do, what I can prove. And then uh, obviously my line mates are playing great. It's fun playing with some of them, building some chemistry with uh, Sodi and uh, Warzy there. So it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's been good. Not too much offense outside of your goal in that last period we saw. Is that just the defensive play has been outstanding by both uh, your team and the Maple Leafs? Yeah, I think today's just kind of more, it's been a real big uh, track meet kind of, just quick mm -hmm. transition, not too many scoring chances for and against, but uh, yeah, it's nice to just break the ice there on one of them and uh, hopefully we can keep this lead. A little bit of a chippy game here we have today. Is yeah. it just that uh, old kind of rivalry you have against the Toronto Maple Leafs or is there just so much on the line that everyone's playing their hearts out? Yeah, I mean, kind of a little bit of both. Obviously, you know, the history between the Wings and the Leafs, and then everybody's kind of, it's the last kind of time to prove uh, kind of before main camp here uh, what everybody can do. So I think, yeah, just kind of a little bit, a little edgy out there, but, I mean, you love it. It's hockey, so it's a good time. All right, what are some positive takeaways that you have out of the second period? Um, I think just uh, we're playing fast. We're playing good. I think we came out to a good start in both periods. Mm -hmm. um, I think if we just keep going, keep making plays, quick, quick in the transition, I think we can keep getting some scoring chances, hopefully get a few more. All right, awesome. Thank you so much. Best of luck. Great goal. I saw your tally out here. Your face just lit up after that. So yeah. congratulations. Thank Looking you. forward to seeing some more, hopefully, in the third period. Yeah, hopefully. Thank right. you. Thanks, Danielle. Back to you. Thank you, Carly. And Cross, Cross Hannes now has four points in three games so far for the Red Wings with a period remaining in this tournament. You know, one thing I noticed about him is, is every time he seems like he has a breakaway, he scores. And <laughs> that's something that management staff is going to look at and say, like, you know, hey, if we need some goal scoring, this might be the guy we call up if he starts the league in the, in the American Hockey League. But, you know, he's, he's quite the character. And uh, he has the bromance, right, with, the bromance. Uh, with Edmondson. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm sure we'll keep an eye on that. And uh, I was surprised you haven't brought that up yet. Uh, you know, Ken, it was for you. I was like, I, I probably brought it up too many times in the last broadcast. But I do love that they have a bromance and the fact that Dan Cleary said it on the stream. That yeah. That's <laughs> what I'm living for. But Cross Hannes did mention, and he shout out his line mates. I think he called him Sodzi and Mordzi. So getting very creative with the nicknames there. But he's talking about Drew Warhead and Elmer Soderbloom. That line has been playing very well together, creating a lot of offense in this game. I, I think in the game of hockey, the nicknames are limited. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's very. It's either if your name go, goes, it goes with a Y, or goes with an R. Yeah, it's, it's uh, awesome. There's always just, based on your last name yeah, too. Always. always. Todd, from a Maple Leaf standpoint, who impresses you throughout the course of this game? Well, I, I think more than anything, I, I I like what Max Ellis brings. I think he he is hasn't had the chances necessarily, but I like the way he's moving the puck. I like what he does when he has it and the vision he has around him. I expect it to grow as the season goes along. I expect him once he finds comfortable people that he can play with and distribute the puck. I like what he does and I, and I think that's what's going to be part of his success formula going forward. Uh, in this game, just finding a way to get it through to the net is probably more important for him than anything else. And, and especially in this third period if they hope to come back and at least tie this one up uh, it's it's going to be up to a guy like Ellis who's proven he can score mm -hmm. to score 
All right, well, we've got a 3-1 game in favor of the Red Wings after 40 minutes of play here at Center Ice Arena in Traverse City. We'll be back with all the third period action in just a few moments. You look around this building and there's not a whole lot of empty seats, boy. And the atmosphere is second to none, created by the fans here. Parkin in on goal, scores! Has first career hat-trick! Oh, big hit! He shoots the puck, he scores! Saved by the Oh, what a stunning stop! That'll play into their feet here at Little Caesars Arena. With the sixth pick in the 2021 NHL Draft, the Detroit Red Wings are proud to select. From Frölunda, Sweden, defenseman Simon Edmondson. A big, strong, dynamic Swedish defenseman. Skates really well, good handle with the puck. He's competitive. You're leading a rush and he's back before any, anybody, a sort of attack is coming. I'm pretty big, so uh, I have pretty long range. Uh, I can steal a puck and kind of good skating as well. So uh, yeah, I used that. That's uh, my advantage. You need to take that roster. It's just not something you get offered. You need to you really need to take that place and coach it to need to see that you can take that roster spot as well. I won't be given to it. He's a bit of a unicorn. There aren't many players in, in prospect this sort of world or in the game right now outside of the NHL who look like him. You just very rarely see that sort of six foot three, six foot four, six foot five defender who can really move, whose greatest asset is maybe his hands. You typically see that in a smaller five foot eleven, six foot defenseman in terms of that ability to beat guys one on one. And that's really Simon's bread and butter. He's got the length and the physicality and all of those things that you expect him to have defensively. But then offensively, he can make a lot of plays with the puck on his stick. And that is very rare for a player who's as big as he is. I'm just excited to be better. I'm young, I'm 19. And I feel like that's something I should take with me too. I have a lot of time to learn and I just take a lot of things from the older guys. Hi parents, this is former Red Wing goalie Jimmy Howard. Registration for the Little Wings Learn to Play program is now open. It's a great way for kids to learn how to play hockey with six hours of ice time and all the equipment needed to hit the ice for $220. Spots fill up quick, so sign up today before it's too late at DetroitRedWings.com slash Little Wings. Today is a very exciting day for the Detroit Red Wing organization and really for all of our Red Wing fans around the world. I'm proud to introduce the 28th coach in Detroit Red Wings hockey history, Derek Malone. Derek, welcome to Detroit. They want to be a team that's getting better. And if they do get better, you don't stay picking high forever. Uh, it's hard to tell what I was thinking at, in that moment because it, it went by so fast and uh, it was just so special. I think there is a real effect to the fact that Steve Eiserman is putting together something in Detroit that players around the league are starting to take note of.
Everybody don't stop, don't quit. Do it like this. Do it like this. Do it like this. Welcome back inside Center Ice Arena here in Traverse City, Michigan for the 2022 Prospect Tournament presented by Huntington Bank. Earlier in the stream, we asked our fans to get involved by voting in today's poll, which is who is the biggest original six rival for Detroit? Now, guys, I was right. I hate to say it, but I was right. <laughs> the Leafs win with 46% or are winning as of right now. Chicago comes in second with 44%. And then Montreal in third place with just 5% of the votes. I am not surprised by the Chicago thing, but ever since the Red Wings moved back into the Eastern Conference, the rivalry has not been as heated as it used to be. And obviously, Toronto, that rivalry speaks for itself. Well, and I might be skewed a little bit because yeah. the folks uh, from Toronto that are, <laughs> may have uh, voted in that uh, that poll. And yeah. I, I, I know in the beginning, I, I, I said, well, gee, you know, I was kind of going over it in my mind. And then I realized... There's no right or wrong answer here. No, it's no. a poll. They, you know, we're just trying to figure out what uh, the fans might think. But it is interesting yeah. to to find that out. And uh, uh, you know, when you go forward and you're kind of looking at uh, all the all the history that went into it, and then all the current things that are going on, yeah, I'm not surprised. Yeah. Well, the good news for Red Wings fans is that Montreal, Toronto, and Chicago will all make appearances at Little Caesars Arena at some point throughout the season. So it sounds like a good time to become a member of Wing Wheel Nation and get some tickets to Red Wings games, Ken. You can visit DetroitRedWings.com slash Wing Wheel Nation to get your tickets. There are a bunch of different plans for people that want to join. So you don't have to do a full season, but there's going to be some exciting things at Little Caesars Arena this year. Did anyone ever vote for Boston or New York? or uh, They left them out, I guess. Out? Yeah. Okay. Well, we all know that. Uh, so it's funny because when you think of original six teams, Everyone has their rivals, Detroit, Toronto, but the, the rivalry for Montreal obviously has to be Boston over the years. Uh, yeah. They, yeah. They've really battled, and Toronto, I guess. Yeah. And then uh, the New York Rangers, uh, you know, it seems like, I don't know if they do have a rival in the original six, but Boston, I guess, and New York were always a, a battle. Well, I think, too, having the Red Wings, the Maple Leafs, and the Canadians all in the same division gives it a little bit more heat, too, there, yeah. right? When, when you see those kind of things, and then... When the Red Wings see Boston, though, I mean, it's a showdown, so I'm surprised that Boston didn't get any votes. I don't know. Montreal, Toronto is legendary. Yeah. It is just... Uh, yes, definitely. It, there is just something about it on a on Hockey Night in Canada on a Saturday night when, when that shows up. You'll get people who have not watched a hockey game all year long. They'll watch that one. Yeah. What about yeah. Buffalo and Toronto? With the proximity, that seems like it's a pretty good rivalry, but Buffalo hasn't been the best of teams of, of late. You know, it's funny. I grew up in Buffalo. I grew up in Hamilton, which is halfway between Buffalo and Toronto. And so as kids playing street hockey and uh, in your driveway, you, you'd have Danny Gare and the French Connection and those guys, <laughs> and, you, you, you know, you'd be all over the place. And then you had a bunch of kids who were uh, all Leaf fans and Palmateer and Sittler. And you'd have these two factions on the street that were kind of 
and then you'd have the odd kid that was a Montreal fan, and they, <laughs> they you know, and they were like bandwagon jumpers because Montreal was great, yeah. you know. So it was just one of those things like, oh, it's so easy to be a Montreal fan. All right, we're getting ready for the third period action. Red Wings have a three-one lead. Toronto will start on the power play, and Ken Cal is going to take over play-by-play -play duties here. One forty-five to go on that Maple Leaf power play. Red Wings control the faceoff, shoot it down the ice, and Rindell will scoop it up, and he'll bring it ahead for the Maple Leafs right through the center ice right circle. Stick candles his way over the Red Wing line into the right circle, tossed it across, and now they get it set up. Boyd moves in with a shot. Soderblom knocked it down with that right leg. He went low to the ice. Edmondson is a little bit dinged up there late in that second period out there on this penalty kill for Detroit. Holmberg holds it in, spin move, trying to push him off the puck. Warred in a penalty killing role for Detroit. Now Wendell gets it, moves over to the blue line, over to the right face off circle. Minton now got it across. Boyd with a shot. Gerard Gachensev was on the doorstep trying to redirect it home, but the rebound comes out of harm's way and into the Toronto zone. Backskates Rindell up across the line, leaps are offside. 51 seconds into the third period, three to one Detroit, 56 seconds to go in that Toronto power play. Well, I like that opportunity and thought process on the last exchange it, that uh, the Leafs had in front of the goal. Just an idea to keep the puck moving, keep moving it around, and then when you see it, take advantage of it. And they did their best, but no result. Boyd got it back to Rendell over to the left face off circle. Holmberg, cross ice feed. Boyd trying to chop it to the blue line. Bothered from behind by Emil Vero, who did not clear it out. Now he does on the second effort after intercepting a Maple Leaf pass. Shoots it down the ice. Toronto will change their power play on the go. Back over the line, Holmberg, and the play is whistled down offside, says the linesman, or is that an icing call? I think it's an icing call. Uh, you know, the funny thing is, when it, the whistle came, and I thought it was, uh, you know, I thought it was offside. I thought, wow, that came in off yeah. awful late. Uh, but indeed, you're right. So the face-off is back. where the Red Wings wanted, deep in that Toronto zone. Red Wing penalty killers, Bliss up front, along with Cross Hannes. Hannes has a goal. Sabrengo and Bianca Batuka. Bianca Batuka saucers it all the way down the ice. Gogolev to pick it up in behind the Toronto net. Starts the attack. Races out to center ice with a puck. Steams over the blue line. Cuts in. Got the shot away. Wide of the goal. Kosa off the rebound off the end boards. Will freeze it along the ice with a glove hand. Cross Hannes in on that penalty kill again. He really has been great on special teams throughout this tournament. Both the power play and the penalty kill. He's got a goal here today. Four points in three games for Cross Hannes so far. I'd like to see, I'd like to see creative playmakers and creative shot takers do exactly that. And I think Gogolev in that situation recognizes that the, you just can't fire it into the pads and call it a day. Gogolev with a shot and closing the door to make the pad save is Kosa. Duragachintsev was uh, right out in front. Him and Tutayev are talking a little bit as the linesman step, step in between those two. Todd, you talk about the creativity there. You have to give your teammates the best chance to get a rebound or whatever that may be in front of the net. Kosa just made the nice play of being able to put that puck under his glove before anyone could get to it. A lot of the things scouts are looking for, like recognition of play, where your teammates are. That's what they're seeing in this, early, in this early part of the season. Penalty is over, Red Wings are at full strength. And the Leafs have not scored a power play goal in the whole tournament. No. No, they, they certainly, in a situation where they just haven't had all the bodies with on at the same times, a lot of moving parts, but you would expect that they would find it at least one that would uh, get some eyes on it and get in there. Shot from long range, turned aside by Costantini, the goaltender for the Leafs. They'll bring it ahead. Rafay out to center ice, crosses the red line, backhands it behind the Red Wing goal, quickly to play it, close to the goaltender to Edmondson. Douglas looking on, trying to steal the puck, he does. Douglas turned it over, and the wings come back out to center ice. That is Mitchell Martin throwing it into the corner. He's got a goal for the Red Wings in this game. Mitchell Martin checked down from behind. Puck comes back to the line, left point. Edvinson with a rising shot over the crossbar. Rebound, right point, Barton. Down into the corner for Martin. Hands it off in the right face-off circle. 
Matthew got it down, a centering attempt out in front of the goal, and it's bounced away to the boards. Wally Zito trying to work it forward. Barton is hit along the boards by Rafay, and that was a big hit. Zito with a centering attempt, and it's knocked loose. Into the corner. Back to the line, it comes to Simon Edmondson. Rolls it over to Barton. Mill the blue line, fakes the shot, shoots it wide, ends up off to the side of the goal. Leafs pick it up, and it's played by Miller. Off the boards, down the ice, into the Detroit zone, and quickly back to play at Barton, hands it off to Edmondson. 3-1, that's our score. Red Wings with the lead. Stealing the puck, Soderblom. He's all alone on the wraparound try. Elects to play it out in front, and it was broken up. Up the left side, here comes Lasowski in over the Red Wing blue line. Little button hook inside the Detroit zone, hands it off. Turning with it, Ellis, he fired a shot that's blocked. It bounces right out in front of the Red Wing goal. Mitten for the Leafs, looking for a loose puck. It ends up along the boards. Lasowski after the puck in the right corner on Plandowski. They battle for it. Ellis in there, too, for the Leafs. Soderblom trying to deflect it away. Odd comes up the right side, out to center ice. Soderblom ran into his man. And Vero takes it over the Leaf line, pushes it back, left circle. Feed across for Soderblom. He just couldn't handle that puck. He tried to one-time it. He had the open side of the net, but uh, could not get the good shot away, and the Leafs now control their own end. It can look like Soderblom's timing was just a hair off in getting that slap shot away. Well, we're in good position. We can see the open side of the net. We knew it, where he was shooting, mm -hmm. or where he wanted to shoot. Jakob Atuka holds it in. He shot the puck, and that one ends up over the crossbar in the far corner, Sobrango. Not Ansel for Detroit. Trying to reach around his man. That was the defender, Noah Van Vliet. Van Vliet will pick it up, roll it off the end boards. Wings center it in front, and it's broken up, and this time Graham Slaggart will play it off and stick out to center ice. Ansel right back over the Maple Leaf line. Slaggart in pursuit. Now Miller will pick it up, go deeper into his own zone to play it away from an oncoming bliss of Detroit. Pass out to Holmberg at center. Rolls it to the Red Wing line, batted away. Slaggart leaves it, and the Leafs settle it down inside their own end. Racing out, Raffae at center ice, moves away from Lombardi. Backhands the puck into the corner. Sobrango took him down, close to a minor penalty there, and I think he's going to get the call. Well, one thing I have liked about the intensity of, uh, of some of the players, when you get to a 3-1 game, especially in a, in a game, a final tournament, there's been a lot of miles logged on the skates. You can have excuses all day long, but... When you keep pressing, keep moving forward, you create plays like that where you're going to give your your team an extra man situation. That's Donovan, Donovan Sobrango who gets the holding call and the Maple Leafs who started the period on the power play trying to get back into this game. It's 3-1 to Detroit, and we are almost five minutes into the third period. Kokadin for the Leafs, left circle, thought about shooting, pulls it back. Swings it down low behind the goal. Quick feet in the slot broken up and Soderblom comes back shorthanded trying to get away from Gerardo Chinsev and he kind of interfered with him a little bit. Red Wing bench all up in arms but the play continues. Here comes Kokanen up across the line. Hands it back. Leafs get it settled down inside the Red Wing zone. Three to one lead for Detroit. Hayes fires it around the boards. Now it's stolen. Edmondson picks it up for Detroit. Lugs that puck himself out the center. Finds some open ice. Steers it into the corner and Hayes to pick it up to move away from Warren. Call that some nice poise on Edmondson there. There's a bit of a situation where you could have thrown out the panic button, but he just skated it right out, chewed up some time. I think that's one of the strengths that they liked about Edmondson's game, his poise, his ability to skate and control the puck there. And Great play by him, you're right. Argachinsev trying to draw a penalty there. He was... Goes down up across the line. Gogolev swings it over to the right circle. Pass over to Durargachensev. Sends it across. Holmberg laid it back on the right point for Rindell. Now to Gogolev moving out in front. Drops it off. Durargachensev with a shot and deep in the crease to make the glove save. Kosa, the Red Wing netminder. Great deceptive play by Gogolev there to draw it in through the middle. He's a guy who does shoot, likes to shoot, and then drops it off to Durargachensev. He gets it away quick, but that's just solid goaltending, good eyes. Yeah, it's a tough angle he had, too. He, he probably would have liked to have been a little more centered on the shot. But, yeah, Sebastian Costa did a great job of covering the net where he needed to. 
Todd, is uh, Durarge Chintsev basically a shooter or is he a setup guy? No, no, this is a this is a playmaker. He's yep. uh, And in fact, he'd like to improve his game by becoming the uh, shot taking option. And, uh, and we saw it there, he's got a decent enough shot to take. So hey, he's a good creative player, he finds players, he's got good vision. And that one uh, is gonna be offside, but uh, uh, but he is he's the kind of player that can make something out of players around him and all you've got to be doing for a lot of the time he played with Nick Robertson in Peterborough he's played with uh, Pavel Gogolev in Peterborough uh, they connected well together and uh, Semyon Dargachintsev is one of those players that if he can grow that shot side of his game add another weapon, add a couple of extra facets and opportunities or, or options for him in his game, suddenly he puts himself in a better spot. Have you seen him improve because he was here in this tournament last year? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Holmberg. Ooh, shot taken, and I believe Costa stopped that one with his face mask. Kind of snuck up on him a little bit there as Holmberg looking for his second goal of the game. Rindell. Slides it over right side, leaps on the power play for just six seconds, and Cross Hannes falling down, picks it up, and wheels it down the ice. There's Cross Hannes again making a clutch play for the Red Wings on the penalty kill. So the penalty killers doing the job for Detroit. They are two for two with the penalty kill here in the third period. Still a two goal lead for the Red Wings. Miller for the Leafs, throws it down low into the corner. Zito all over his man as Barton tries to help out, gets it ahead to Pasquale Zito, now two to Taya. Out to center ice, Vero over the line, his shot partially deflected, ends up in the protective netting behind Marco Costantini, the Leafs net miner. Emil Vero having a good game here today. He has the goal that was scored late in the first period for the Red Wings. He kind of turned and just shot it, and hey, you might need a little bit of luck with a goal like that, but he's been playing well for the Wings, able to control the puck very nicely, and there you saw him get it out of the Red Wings zone, very smooth. Zito in for the draw for Detroit with Tutayev and uh, the other forward for the Red Wings is Ivan Ivan. Leafs come back though. Here is McGurn up over the Detroit line. Dropped past the Douglas. Circles the net on the wraparound and Kosa closed the door and made the pad save. From the line, Rafay with a shot and that one ends up into the corner. Partially deflected out in front of the Wings goal. Zito with it for Detroit. Steers it out to center ice to Tutayev. Carrell will dump the puck into the corner in the leaf zone. Miller to pick it up behind the Maple Leaf net. Slides it up the right side to Femis. Turns away from a check Femis does. Circles with it at his own blue line. Throws it across. And out to center ice. That is Gerard Gucinsa moving in towards the goal. And at the last second, Bianca Batuka poked the puck away. And the Red Wings fail to clear it out. Edmondson helping out for Detroit into the corner. Turns away from traffic. Leafs play it back to the line, knocked away, and here comes Matthew one-on-one -on -one over the line against Kokanen, trying to cut out in front, and Kokanen claims he got hit with a high stick, and he made a good defensive play to stop the wing player. Leafs at center ice, dump it back in. Kosa in behind his own goal. Looking to set it up, hands it off to Ansel. Red wing forward. Cross ice feed to Edmondson. Up the right wing over the Toronto line, backhands the puck around the boards. Ansel in there along with Piercy. Piercy had four goals in the opening game for Detroit in the tournament. Out to center over the line, Gogolev into the Red Wing end. Pass deflected away by Ansel. Lombardi circles back to his own blue line. Detroit's changing. To Tyev, hands it back. Here's Lombardi up across the line trying to push the Leafs back in their own zone. Lombardi checked it along the boards. Pass in front, Piercy to Barton, and he was covered right there. Good solid defensive play by Lasowski. Play is in deep, still in that Toronto zone. Three to one Red Wings, 9.42 to play in regulation. Lasowski out at center ice, stepped in to stop, trying to penetrate that Red Wing blue line. Lasowski hands it back, Lafay moves in with a shot. He actually had Kosa beat that time on that wrister, but fired it wide to the right goal post. I think he's been good in this game, Marshall Ruffay. Holmberg back checking, Lombardi got it in the slot to tie up <clears throat> with a feed in front to Piercy and he just <clears throat> tried to make the move, he was stopped. Sabrango with a drive and that one ends up off the end glass. <clears throat> and the Leafs to tap it back into the Red Wing zone. Sabrango scoops it ahead to Tutaev. 
Now to Plandowski, out to center ice, over the leaf line, turned it over to Holmberg. Holmberg hands it off, Kokanen on the attack into the Detroit end, puck batted down out of midair. Now race for the puck, cross Hannes after intercepting, makes his way in, cuts inside, goes outside, and then lost the puck. Warad knocked down in the corner. Miller trying to jam it loose for Toronto. Hannes stole the puck momentarily. Warad trying to play that puck away from Holmberg. Another pile up along the boards. Hannes taps it now to Soder, er, Soderblom. Soderbaum played it up the left point to Sobrango to Soderbaum. Koken in all over his back. Amel trying to get that puck. Or Elmer rather, now across Hannes. Bad angle shot, stopped in the rebound, cleared down the ice. And this one rolls on edge like a tire down into the Detroit zone and an icing call against the Leafs. A nice couple of shifts for the Red Wings. Notably, Amadeus Lombardi had a great shift just a couple of minutes ago. He was working really hard, and that's what I think I like about him the most. You think he's going to lose the puck in the corner, but he's back in there winning the battle, finding his teammates. He's very aware of where his teammates are at all times, something really like about him. And then Elmer Soderblom, again, using his size to create some type of opportunity, being able, again, to win the puck battles in the corner and it deep in the defensive, I'm sorry, the offensive zone and find his teammates. Well, and I, th I think the best way to protect the lead is just keep coming. And, uh, you know, the Leafs got into that situation with Columbus yesterday. They got into a little bit of fingernail hockey, just hanging on and hanging on. And, and Columbus is able to come back in this one. And rather than just sit back and try to protect it, keep coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that bend, but don't break opportunity or mentality just doesn't work or if you sit back, right? Yeah, it just, you're just giving a, another team a chance to find that lucky seam. Jakubatuka handles the puck behind the Red Wing goal, cuts in front of Kosa, sends it up the left wing board, Zito. Cross ice pass, broken up. Alex Rindell. Dragicinsev had the puck stolen by Zito. Over the leaf line, stepped into Rindell, following up Matthew though, left circle for Detroit. Fired the shot, save made, Konstantini, and now the Leafs come back. Gerard Gichinsev with a feed to Gogolev, shoots it into the Detroit zone. Kosa taking no chances with Gerard Gichinsev on the doorstep, and he will hang on to it. 7-11 to go in the third period. It's a 3-1 Red Wing lead. Well, and I think, if you, I think if you go through this tournament for both these teams, for really every team that, that comes here, uh, it's pretty hard to say mission doesn't get accomplished mm -hmm. uh, because... One, you want to get these people uh, the opportunity to get on the ice and get up to speed. And, you know, you talked earlier in the game, you talked to some of the players, and they say, yeah, I, I, I didn't know I wasn't at game speed mm -hmm. until I got here and I recognized, yeah, it's faster, it, it's, it's harder, this is where I need to be. Well, you know what? In a couple of days, it's going to be even harder still. Right. So it, this tournament does do its job. And you see the guys working for the rink, and I think all the volunteers who do the job here, too, in Traverse City. It's been absolutely terrific. Every year that uh, I come here, I can't believe how absolutely organized it is. Just going to ask you, Todd, uh, you know, what, what's it like from a visitor's point of view where, you know, the Maple Leafs get a chance to compete with four other teams in this in this tournament, and do they like coming up to Traverse City for this tournament? Yeah, I, you know what? There isn't anybody that uh, that drops in here. You don't hear any negative comments about uh, about you know. We talk to the players, and they they'll come back from a walk along the the path. Uh, there, you know, I went out cycling uh, yesterday or Saturday when we had the day off, and there's plenty to see and do, and it's also relaxing away from the rink, and everybody in town seems to know what you're there for. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it really does feel uh, like it's important and it feels like you're going in the right direction to start your season. I know the Red Wings, even being from Detroit, it's about a three and a half hour drive from Detroit to get to Traverse City. Think it's great to get up here and away from Detroit, a nice bonding experience for the players too. Yeah, there's that side of it too. Yeah. Gogolev, now to Hayes with a shot and Kosa came out to make the save. Kosa has been tested here in the third period and he is not allowed a goal as the puck comes out to center ice and Vero will fire the puck into the Toronto zone. 21 shots by the Leafs in the game. Just 13 shots for Detroit. The Red Wings have that two goal lead, three to one. Hayes marches down into the Red Wings zone. Barton with a poke check on him, helping out Emil Vero behind the Red Wing net. 
Red Wings on the attack. Lombardi off the bench on a change. To Tyev out there. As the Wings break out, Vero pass, misses everybody. Leaps intercept, Minton over the Red Wing line, moves in left circle, shoots the puck, nets off the shin pad of Barton and into the protective netting behind Sebastian Kosa. I like Minton's shot selection choice here because he also tries to drag this in just a little bit to draw that, uh, draw away the vision of the goaltender and give himself a little bit of a screen. Uh, it's pretty easy just to shoot that shot uh, right where he was and, and not make any move at all. But uh, I, I liked his choice there. That, uh, that speaks to just how uh, deceptive he's going to be as a player going forward. On the flip side, Vero needs to make sure he clears that puck. His pass was, it didn't hit anybody is I guess what I'm saying. So he's got to make sure that he's finding that breakout pass cleanly. But imagine too, if you're a shooter and you pull that puck closer to your body, it changes the angle of shooting the puck on goal. Yeah, Could makes, pull the goal. Tennis. Makes it harder. Makes yeah. it harder. It's, uh, everybody talks about if you've got a decent back end, which is a very hard thing to cultivate. Uh, very hard to read as a goaltender. Oh, here's a shot up high, and the goaltender, Constantini, comes up with a save. That one actually hit his face mask. And he will hang on to it in the goal crease. Both goaltenders have used their face mask <laughs> for a save here today. Which, which reminds me of back in the original <laughs> six days. How the heck can those goaltenders oh. back in the day play without a goal mask? They just saved it with their teeth instead. What teeth? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a look at the replay. And that was Amadeus Lombardi again getting in there. As I mentioned, he works hard. He's been getting in on the offensive side of things. Here's Voigt through center ice for Toronto. Shot the puck into the Detroit players bench and the faceoff come out to center ice. 521 remaining in regulation. Two goal lead for the Red Wings, three to one. Wings open up their regular season against the Montreal Canadiens. Then they're on the road in New Jersey. Come back for a game against the Los Angeles Kings. And again, opening night, Friday, October 14th. Get your tickets right now, and uh, we'll see you at Little Caesars Arena. Yeah, it's a big production on opening night. We'll have the red carpet again. It'll be a lot of fun. We always love the first game of the season. The fans are amazing at LCA. They were big all, all season long last year, which was great to see. And they have more to be excited about this year, too. We want to remind you that the stream is presented by Huntington Bank. We thank them for sponsoring as the puck comes out to center ice. Wings trying to shut down the Leafs. Five minutes to go in the third period. It's Bianca Batuka steering the puck. That puck eluded the uh, Red Wing forward, Drew Warred, along the near boards on your television screen, and it's icing called against the Red Wings. Well, and I, I, I want to say thanks to you know, Mark and his crew yep. here. That oh, I don't want to call Mark, Mark and the crowd. Brian and Brad and Eric and that's uh, impressive. Er, Everyone remember their names. Well, you're good at it. You know what? These guys <laughs> have been so good to me in the time that I've been here doing this. And I and if you think, by the way, streaming these games has some sort of ease about it, like you just put on your webcam and away we go, it's far more difficult. And I certainly appreciate that the work uh, that uh, that they have done. Yeah, they work hard to get this up and running here in Traverse City and do a lot of work to bring all you guys all of these games all week long here at the Prospect Tournament. And we'll do it for training camp, too. So a big shout out to them. I'm amazed that you remember the names because too, I tell people incredible. if you don't have a name or number on your back, I don't know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> Soderblom out at center ice. Taps the puck up across the line. There are Gichinsa. Well, they've laughed at my jokes, so I, I felt I owed them that much. You had some big zingers there. <laughs> I've been listening. Play is back behind the Red Wing goal. Time winding down. 4.03 to go. Back on the line. Hayes floats the puck. Zito steals for Detroit. Not much room to maneuver. Gogolev holds it in. Got it across. Right side. Rafay with a shot. Going down the block it is uh, Vero, the Red Wing defender. Sacrificing the body and the puck trickles down the ice. Yeah, he skates to the bench, wincing just a little bit, Emil Vero, after taking that shot. But get, sacrificing your body, blocking those shots is something that defensemen have to do, and that was a great play. Zito out at center steals for the Red Wings, and Lasowski took the puck away from him. Sabrango with a hit, and I think he got the elbow up just a little bit on Lasowski. Martin having words with one of the lead players right now. Here's another look at Vero getting down to block the shot. Got to be brave. Yeah, it is. it is brave. Yeah, and, and 
you know, the nice thing about this tournament, you want to get out of this tournament, you know, as as not as dinged up as you could be. <laughs> yeah, as and, healthy and as to possible. And do that with a little over three minutes remaining to get in front of him and to block a shot speaks to the character. Well, I think he knows, too. We talked about it. He gave up that long feed pass that didn't quite go to one of his players, resulting in a scoring chance for Toronto. So he says, you know what, not this time. Well, the on Vero is that uh, he's got good speed, strong mobile, closes the gaps quickly, and uh, he can skate bigger than his size. He's pretty good at shot blocking, too, and we saw it right there. Huck is in the Maple Leaf zone. Sabrango, not Edmondson. Checked in along the boards by Lasowski. Leaps intercept and bring it back the other way. Tommy Miller at his own blue line of mitten. Sends it across. Rindell charges wide around Bianca Batuka. Tried to center it out in front. And that one hit the stick and skate of Edvinson. On the near boards to tie up, tied up his man. Lombardi moves out to center away from Slagger. But Rafai to pick it up. For Rafay, rather, to play it to Edvinson at the Detroit line, who intercepted it, bouncing puck at center. And here comes Tutayev, two on one over the line, moves in with a shot, and getting his stick on it to deflect it away was the Maple Leaf player. Ken, how about the pairing of Simon Edvinson and Bianca Batuka, who have been together through this third period? We'll take a look at Tutayev's shot here, too. Goes just off the pad of the goaltender. But I really like that pairing because I thought Bianca Batuka has had a great tournament. And Simon Edvinson, obviously, a very high-end prospect for the Red Wings. So seeing them together has been impressive through the third period. The thing about Bianca Batuka is uh, he's a pretty good skater. And he makes that good pass out of his own zone. And uh, really hasn't gotten beat too much throughout right. the course of this game. And by the way, that was a good play by Rafay coming back on that mm -hmm. uh, last possession by the Red Wings trying to score. A timeout here, I think, called by... Toronto down by a couple of goals. They want to make sure they have a plan in place. You take a look at Ben Simon, who was yep. with the Toronto Marlies, an assistant coach, and uh, what a great year. Uh, ben Simon is maybe one of the funniest guys. I've oh ever yeah, with. he is just a he is just a, a talent when it comes to humor. <laughs> Absolutely, I would imagine the Leafs going to pull their goaltender right here, huh? Uh, could be up to it. Yeah, could be up to it. Two minutes. I mean. It, these days, you never know when the goaltender gets pulled in a game. Sometimes it's five minutes yep. here. Sometimes it's – it all depends on how much risk you're willing to take. And that's part of the game that has changed over the years. You go way back, and a goaltender wouldn't be pulled until maybe 30 seconds yes. left or a minute to go. But you're right. The, if you're down by two or three goals and you want to get your team back in, well, sometimes coaches will pull them at four minutes to go just to see what will happen, especially if you're on the power play. Well, and I think the numbers support it. Yep. You know, they, they, when you do all the – uh, calculations, additions, you, you know, fold over the sheet, put it six ways, and add up four to that, and then divide it by three. You got to pull your goaltender. That's analytics. the way I do stats. I love that. Yep. Yeah. That's that's oh. the analytics these yeah, days. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm all, I'm all about marking things and then four things. Put a line through it. That's <laughs> that's five. I'm still working that system. <laughs> There's other people with all kinds of computers on them all the time. I just. So you're not leading the Leafs statistics department right I am now, not. analytical Metcalf, department. Okay. I am like their mascot. <laughs> this is what this is what you don't do. <laughs> well, the faceoff is deep in the Maple Leaf zone, so Constantini will probably go to the bench. I would imagine once the play gets back into the Red Wing end. And here come the Leafs, turning with it through Arguchinsev. Watch closely by Lombardi for Detroit. Two minutes to go in the game. Two goal lead, three to one Red Wings. He's taking their time and bring it ahead. Durarki Chinsev on at center ice. There goes the goaltender, Costantini, for the extra attacker. Leafs trying to pull out all the stops here and get back into this game. 1.45 to go. Puck loose to the side of Kosa. Ends up right out in front of the Detroit goal. Spun into the corner. Durarki Chinsev checked by Barton behind the Red Wing net. Still control. Vero took a slap at the puck. Durarki Chinsev trying to jam it away with the stick. Time winding off the clock, minute 27 to play. Puck along the boards, intercepting it to Tyev, sends it across, picking it up for Detroit. That is Piercy with the empty net, shoots the puck, right smack dab in the middle of the goal. He scores, and it's 4-1 to Detroit. And that's his fifth goal of the tournament. Well, and you'll look back on this one, and some people just pick up the stats on Tuesday morning, or I guess later this afternoon. Yeah. Uh, and and say, look, you had a great tournament, and that's enough, really. The empty net goal 
And to put those kind of numbers up in uh, over the course of three games, you've got to be pretty satisfied. Yeah, especially, again, we talk about the free agent invitees that are here at this camp trying to make the impression. Riley Pierce, he's going to go home tonight feeling pretty good about himself. Yeah. That actually puts him in the lead as far as goals in the tournament. He has five. Two other players have four. That's uh, Blumel and actually one other player, Blumel, had four. He had a hat trick mm -hmm. against Detroit yesterday. So Piercy leads right now as far as goals scored in the tournament. Leaf shoot it in off a stick, and that one deflects into the protective netting behind Kosa. 59 seconds to go in the game, 4-1 to Detroit. Well, there'll be lots of individual lessons to be handed out here. These guys will have a meeting about what they did. Uh, in the tournament probably tomorrow. Uh, some of them uh, you know, will get enough information that they'll be able to build on it and go forward into camp. Some will get information enough to take their game to the next level, the AHL camps, and some of them will be able to go back to junior and say, I know exactly what I have to do to get better. Well, part of it is what you learn here, right? What you do yeah. with that information that you take away from the prospect tournament that management staffs, coaching staffs will be watching. Wiss with a shot on goal, point blank. Marco Costantini with the save. 40 seconds left to play in this one. Flandowski moves in, shoots the puck. Saved by Costantini again. Sobrango misfires. Now it's lifted ahead by Slagger. Race down the right wing boards. Hayes getting there first to knock it away was Flandowski. Kosa out of his net to steer it to the wing. Out to center ice it comes. Leafs take it back over the blue line. Rindell. Sabrango dug it loose, got it out to center ice, and the puck is picked up now by the Leafs as they pick it up around the boards. Van Vliet into the corner. Long pass out at center, broken up. Wings Matthew will shoot it back in. Three seconds to go in the game, and there goes the horn. This one is over. Solid performance by the Red Wings. Four to one over the Toronto Maple Leafs. The Wings skate out, congratulate Sebastian Kosa, did not give up a goal in this game. And the Red Wings, two and one in the tournament as they knock off the Leafs four to one. Sebastian Kosa doesn't give up a goal, Ken. I think we have to give him the nod for how well he played in his two appearances this tournament. Yeah, absolutely. And Bednar was terrific too. He only gave up one goal in uh, two games played. All right. We're going to go down to Carly Johnston now, who's joined by the head coach, Ben Simon. That's right. Winning coach of today's game, 2-1 and one on the tournament. We've seen a lot in this game, a lot of chippy, a lot of block shots, a lot of goals that we have throughout this tournament. What are some takeaways that you have from the tournament as a whole with these prospects? Well, it was fun. Obviously, when you only have one practice and you play three games in four nights, there's not a lot of preparation. But it was fun to see how the guys took the little bit of teaching that we did try to implement and, and they did apply it and got better. So some of the things that we talked about before the game, you could see it reflect in the play tonight, which is encouraging. It's fun to, to see these kids, they, they, they do learn. All right, five goals for Riley Piercy in the tournament. He led all players in goals. What is something that you see in the prospects tournament? It's really anyone's time to shine, right? Well, I think it's an opportunity for all these young prospects, whether you're an invite or a draft pick or anything, to come in here and you know, there are a lot of teams, not only Detroit, that are looking at them. So, you know, for those guys to get the opportunity to play in front of a lot of scouts and a lot of teams, it's great for them. And some solid goaltending. Yeah, I Sebastian thought, you know, Wilson. I thought the tournament for the entire three games that we played, I thought we had good, great goaltending from all three guys. Absolutely. A so. great tournament for the Detroit Red Wings. Yep. Really looking forward to training camp we have here. Thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Thanks, Back Charlie. to you, Daniela. Thank you, Carly. And thank you, Ben Simon. I was hoping for a joke. I didn't get a Ben Simon joke there, Todd. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to coach him up a little bit yeah. next time I see him. You get that opportunity to be on a stream like this yeah. with literally millions of people watching it. You've got to lay something on us. Well, he was complimentary of the goaltending, Ken, as we were talking about just before we tossed down there. And that's Jan Bednar, Sebastian Kosa, and Andrew Roke had his moments of greatness as well. Well, we talked about that at the beginning of the show, about the goalkeeping and how important it is for the goalkeepers to come mm -hmm. out here in this tournament and really improve over the last year. And Kosa, I thought, did that, did not allow a goal in the tournament. And uh, Jan Bednar was really terrific, especially yesterday. Played a good half, but only gave up one goal mm -hmm. to the Maple Leafs, and that was early on in the hockey game. So defensively speaking, the Red Wings did well on the penalty kill, shut down the power play of the Toronto Maple Leafs, got good, solid goalkeeping. Leafs outshot the Red Wings 23-17 to in the contest, so... They had to be good in their own zone. They got the goals when they needed it, and that was all she did, all she wrote here today. All right, Todd, give us your biggest takeaways from what you saw here today. Well, not only today, but I think over the tournament, the mortar never set for the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs. They had a lot of bricks to put in place, but they never just quite found all the 
pieces that got put together in the in, in the right way. They they had a moment there in that first game against Dallas. They they got it going in the right direction, but you got to work with a lot of different pieces and and a lot of talented pieces. And and if they could take away anything, it's all about looking at individuals in this situation. How did you react? What did you do in this situation? Today, I think you look at a guy like Max Ellis, and, and he will look back on this game and say, that's an opportunity. He looks at the video that I could have done this. And, and when you look at a guy like Marshall Raffae, who I think is the Leafs' best player today defensively, he's a guy that, that all of a sudden vaults himself in the organization's eyes to say, that, that's a guy that we're going to think a little more about uh, going forward because – he made a play here late in the game. I think it was still 3-1, and, and it saved it from you know, getting out of hand and gave the Leafs a chance to get back into it. Of course, the empty netter solved it, but uh, nonetheless, I, I liked what he brought today, and, and I think if these guys take anything out of this, uh, this game, it's that uh, it's pretty hard to be cohesive uh, yeah. in a four-game schedule. And, again, fourth game in five days. There's some guys out there with heavy legs. That's right. Well, we appreciate you taking the time to join us, Todd Crocker, the play-by-play -play voice of the Toronto Marlies. We appreciate you being here with us and providing your insight. Absolutely. If uh, they ever have me back, really, I I'll come back next week. Uh, <laughs> just, you know, who, who knows? The Cherry Festival, whenever they need me. Careful Traverse what you City, ask for. <laughs> Traverse City can invite They'll me back They'll make you the Grand time. Marshal. Yeah, that's that. right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for tuning in to another stream of the 2022 Prospect Tournament presented by Huntington Bank. We'll be back later this week with more action from training camp. Stay tuned to Red Wing social media channels for more information on that. I'm Daniela Bruce alongside Ken Kale, Todd Crocker, and Carly Johnston today. Thank you all so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time.